AJ, just, just before I hit the go live button in the distance in Worcester, Massachusetts, I can hear church bells ringing. And for just a second, I said, well, thank God all the zombies are going to play bingo. Dude, I'm on vacation right now. Um, I, I don't, I don't have time for church for bells right now. There's always time for church bells. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. I announced on Thursday, Brian, yeah. that I'm taking a short vacation. And since then I did, I, I, I helped you work on the award show a little I'm, bit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You what now? Yeah, I did. I, you, oh yeah. I'm sorry. I did yep. all the work on the award show. And then, <laughs> yeah. and then you were a thorn, you were I, a I thorn in my side for the award show. Yes. This is accurate. Yes. You made my life then, more difficult. Now, You're correct. I've done a, a games cast Saturday and then, a, and now a games cast Monday <laughs> when I'm supposed to be on vacation. So I'm on vacation. Excellent. Don't talk to me. Would, <laughs> uh, would you like me to get somebody else to co-host the show with me today? No, nah, I'm already here. Fuck it. No, well, if you're already here, then I guess fuck it. All right. Cool, man. <laughs> well, happy new year. Let's get this thing started. Brought to you by MeUndies. Oh, fucking. It's going to be a, it's gonna be a terrible <laughs> year. <laughs> Let's go. This is PSVR Gamescast Live, where we film live every single Monday, West Day, and Two Wise Friday, right here on Without Parole. We do it live 6 p.m. Eastern for your viewing pleasure, but don't worry, we also care about your oral pleasure. So we put this thing up on podcast services of your choice. What what kind of weird pirate thing are you doing over there? I'm so it's confused. Viewing pleasure and oral pleasure. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, yeah, this one. Yeah. yeah. 6 p.m. Eastern. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Brian Pop from this channel right here. PSVR without Pearl. And this gentleman over here to my left, you're right. It's a lie. It's a big lie, dude. I'm living a lie. We're all living the lie. We're all sharing in my life. This is my right. This is my right. And you're on my right. So you're on my right and their right. But like, it just doesn't roll off the tongue like it used to. So my right, you're right. It's AJ from the underground. PSVR underground. What is up, Brian? What is up, Game Cats? Happy New Year! Woo! Man, what a 2023 it was. Let's reflect on the whole year, shall we? <laughs> oh, it is Monday. It is the very first Monday. It is the first Games Cast. It is the first of January 2024. All welcome. And I know that Mondays usually suck, but we are here, Brian. To ensure your first Monday and games cast of the year sucks. Just a little bit less. We need to come up we need to come up with new running jokes for twenty twenty four. Oh man. Uh I let um, that one breathe a little bit. <laughs> second, Mad Vegan says that is your left. So I guess if my left, I'm so confused. I'm pointing right. Oh, it's to my right, your left. So it's not to my left, your right. It's to my right, your left. Nope. I don't know. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't uh, understand I think simple concepts. This, this is to my right. So you're to my right. But yeah, on the screen, you're on my left. All right, you want to attempt a high five? Where's? Oh yeah, we're, we're, this is terrible. There's a big games <laughs> cast live logo between us. Oh man, guys, if you don't know already, um, you should come join our Discord. Come hang out. Uh, shoot the shit. It's where I live and die, live and breathe. But I'll probably die there too. Um, it's, yeah, I'm there like constantly every single day. So come hang out, shoot the shit. That's where conversations like these happen 24 seven. Uh, click the link in the description below. While you're doing that, make sure you go check out AJ's channel at PSVR Underground. Subscribe to him. Spread the VR love around. AJ, what's been going on, man? You're, you're taking a few days off. Um, I work. am on vacation. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm on vacation from the channel. 
I still have to work, (laughs) unfortunately, (laughs) because I still have to make money to survive. But um, no, I'm literally I'm literally taking a break. But but, uh, you know, with you tied up with the the award show last month and, uh, you know, we ended the year with apparently the best game of the year, um, according to voters, according to voters and many other people, uh, you know, that's that's pretty awesome. We we started the launch of PSVR 2 with some of the best games, and we ended the year with one of the best games, if not the best. Uh, so really awesome way to to cap that year off. And uh, yeah, man, no, I'm, I'm taking a quick break um, from, from a couple things, but um, just, just want to, you know, want to step away for a minute and then come back super fresh and um and you know get back to making some of the content that i've been wanting to make because you know when you try to keep up with everything all the time it's like there's ten thousand things you want to do you end up getting none done um <clears throat> yep so i'll still be doing it like interactive chat most likely especially if there's lots of news um but you know i just i, I just need a little you know a little mental health break and and then get back to things and hopefully um i i have a goal to uh create bigger better content this year so uh but that's going to require some fresh air first <laughs> yeah for sure dude i am uh, i'm i'm so thrilled to not be sick anymore i'm so thrilled that the award show is over uh because to what that means for me is that i can kind of get to uh you know ba- back to the things that that make the channel function you know I'm, I'm i'm kind of excited about making another episode of psvr this week you know this upcoming weekend i'm excited about uh getting reviews done obviously there's going to be uh you know I, we, we just had a whole month of games come out i haven't done reviews for any of those i've barely played any of those um and so just kind of getting back to like what makes uh you know make, make, makes the channel run you know, like the stuff you're getting people... very blurry, like you're yep. trying to conceal your identity, just so you know. <laughs> well, I'm not doing a good job because now you can completely see my view of Worcester um, <laughs> in, in the background. <laughs> it's like you're focused on the background and not on you. Yeah, you need to reverse that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so, there you go. Uh, hey, hey, you know. Oh, oh, uh, hey, and it's, you, and it's back. This, you know what? This, this Screw is, up. yeah, this Let's is just <laughs> this is gold for the audio listeners, by the way. Gold. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, but dude, I mean, yeah, I'm excited to like, you know, go play things like, I mean, even Tiger Blade, you know, like some of these smaller games that came out and like, didn't, uh, you know, didn't, didn't get really any attention from me. Uh, dude, last night I played Breachers with, uh, mm. I played with Tatum and Izzard and, um, oh shoot, who else was on the team? I should have, I should have thought about this before. Uh, don't feel uh, bad. He, d- he does this with me. Who me? I, I do this. Yeah, yes. Yeah. No. We. we like, have, who was I playing oh, with? Oh, like oh, me. Right. And and Miles. I completely. I completely <laughs> exactly. forgot it was Miles. Yep. Don't feel bad, Miles. <laughs> oh, don't don't worry. Miles said he's not watching, so we is so it's game on. We can make fun of Miles okay. as much as we want tonight. Okay. Because um, he didn't. He didn't, listen, he didn't want to spoil anything for uh, for RE4, and I totally get that. Um, but you know, just a heads up. We, we were going to have a pretty typical games cast for the first 20, 30 minutes here uh, before we dive into spoiler stuff. Um. Yeah. But uh, but dude, yeah, I played Breachers, and like that was something that I had played the tutorial of in one round of when I was still sick, and I was like, oh, I, I can't play this, like my stomach hurts and uh, it's making me nauseous. Uh, and so uh, and so we ended up playing, uh, we ended up playing a good chunk of uh, of Breachers. I, I don't even know how many rounds we played, uh, but holy crap, man, we played with, we played with some squeakers, right? And they were uh, they were they were just a there's a horrible group of children. Uh, who, who, <laughs> yeah. who were who were <laughs> said awful things and um and, and it was and it was nice when we uh, finally started kicking their ass because you know nothing worse than like being shit on by a bunch of kids and on top of that getting your ass kicked by them yeah, yeah um, agreed but yeah so I was just I was just getting the feel for breachers last night and understanding how it worked and, and really getting used to the controls and uh, but man I like it is. I mean, we. I think it. I think it needs a few improvements. You know, like really, we need better haptics in that game because every time you fire your gun, it feels like you're firing, tomb, tomb, tomb. Like it's just like so. Um, I don't know. It's not impactful at all. Yeah. Um, and man, if they can up the uh, the resolution a little bit on that, um, speak as somebody who is blurry currently, I, I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, I you need dude, a resolution patch. <laughs> I do. Yeah, the whole camera needs a resolution <clears throat> patch. Um, but yeah, it's it, it's it's. There it is. Uh, it's the lighting is good in that game. The textures are okay, um, and, 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 and the maps are gigantic. 
So and it's fun though, right? And it's fun, right? But so yeah. so that's just like some slight improvements. If they can boost the resolution overall, if they can up, you know, uh, make the haptic stronger, this is stuff that would like just really add to the appeal. Um, have you have you had a chance to play much Breachers? Yeah, yeah, and I've talked about it several times now. Um, it's it's really fun gameplay wise, um, but yeah, like quality wise, it does leave a little bit to be desired. It it doesn't feel like a like a next gen game. Um, <clears throat> it feels kind of like a late last gen game for sure, for but sure. it's good though. It's good. It's a good foundation. I'm hoping that, you know, it has some success and then over time, uh, they just update it. And if they, if they stick with it and give us some major updates, like, yeah, you're looking at a pre one of the definitely, uh, at least a top 25 game in the, in the catalog. Yeah, I think so. For sure. For sure. And it's, and it's really good to, you know, when, when um, the last thing we want to do is keep comparing this to Firewall. Obviously, Firewall had a terrible launch. Um, you know, might might not even be great right now, uh, depending on who you talk to. I need, I need to jump back into that, though, because there were a bunch of patches and people were saying that it yeah. was on the right path. And that's basically what I was waiting for. Um, so I am, I do plan on jumping back into Firewall at some point to check it out because, you know, there were some remnants of the the good game that it used to be but yeah it was just a disaster like you said <sighs> absolute disaster um at this point you know with the, with the studio shutting down with um with with really the uh with, with the rely uh, with the reliability the responsibility being on sony at this point to keep the servers running um and you know being a sony funded game i i, I honestly think as a sign of good faith to the community uh, the, I, I think I think Sony needs to refund everybody's money. Be like this: this was an experiment that went horribly wrong. And I say experiment; it was a game that went horribly wrong, um, and, and ended a yeah. studio. Yeah, it was an established thing, right? Uh, <clears throat> it was like just fucking refund everybody's money. Be like, hey, you know, thanks everybody who tried to support this game. It didn't work out. Um, you know, sign of good faith. Re re refund the money, uh, and uh, let's. Move I guess on. the only other thing you could do is put it as like a ps plus game or something oh but man what a what a fucking kick in the face that would be be like hey here's your ps plus game uh, <laughs> right and, it, yeah, and, and we're probably shutting down the servers next month <laughs> like it's not it's not what you want uh, right yeah. um it was funny too i i saw uh, i saw somebody uh leave a nice long message after our uh after our post award show games cast um, oh boy nice long message Basically shitting on all of us saying, I can't believe the topic of firewall came up and you guys didn't even blah, blah, blah. You're way too forgiving and you're pussyfooting around the whole thing. And, you know, and I was like, dude, we're not even talking about the game. We weren't even talking about firewall, the game during the award show. Yeah. We, we were talking about uh, the, the studio and people losing their jobs and people in some of those people landing on their feet immediately with Reggie yeah. and strange games like this is a a good thing to come out of a bad situation and people like at least I was, I was say people weren't mad one person was fucking yeah, yeah. so angry he's like he's like i've oh, unsubscribed man. to all four of your channels fuck you guys i'm good. gonna go find somebody who'll be angry about this and i'm like good good go find yeah, somebody please. who is miserable <laughs> like you and get the fuck out of our lives because you know what if you're just gonna be a negative fucking pain in the ass then you're not somebody i want to see in the comment section um this do, do, this do, is do, true aj People are like, you've got a hundred thousand subscribers. You need to you need to grow a thicker skin. I don't have a thick skin, so this is where I meant <laughs> <laughs> this, everything. People are like, oh, you get you you got hundred thousand. You should you should just be used to death threats by now. People, say, yeah. pe these are real things that real people have said, AJ, <laughs> and it's not true, man. It's not true. We are we are real people, uh, and we, and we take, you know, we we take criticism. I think uh, seriously. You know, um, it doesn't it community doesn't... feedback, man. Like we take yeah. in community feedback as is any good operation should. Right. And if and if but if you're just a negative fucking little prick, then feel yeah, free then to get out of off. feel free to get out of my life. Right. <laughs> if everything I do is going to piss Especially you off, then I'm glad you're not here sense. anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yep. Agreed. I've and so, to, in I've summary, breachers is with... fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, there's the the thing is there's too many awesome, amazing things going on. You know, I posted on Twitter recently, like, and I was reflecting a bit, and I was like, man, like, 2023 is legitimately one of the best years in gaming that I can remember in a very, very long time, and like, that's all of gaming. I mean, if and if you put it as just PSVR two alone, 
Um, if you look at like the titles that we got, I, I, I just quickly threw it together some picture and it's like Gran Turismo 7, Resident Evil Village, Resident Evil 4, No Man's Sky, uh, Pavlov, Demio, Synapse, uh, like all these things. Um, uh, it, it's just like, wow, like what a year it really was, man. Like, and so like, you know, while being critical is important and stuff, it's like at the end of like I also don't forget the reason I do this in the first place, and that's because I really enjoy uh, PlayStation VR two and um, and I enjoy gaming and and I like c- celebrating the things that uh, you know the the big wins as well. Like that's more fun to me than shitting on stuff um, yeah. all the time. That's just not how I'm wired. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Um, it's, it's, you know, we're, we're here to tell you what's good and what's bad, um, or try to help you out and, and point you in the right direction, whether you choose to listen to that or not. And, um, but, but, you know, we're also not here to, yeah, people, people are like, you should have like in the award show, they're like, you should have the five worst games of the year, you know, like top, top five worst games, like, you know, have people vote on it. I was like, no, man, like, that's just not our, it's just not the way we operate, you know, like, like but this game, boy, this game's crap. You know, if if I have time, I'll review it, and and hopefully you'll understand that. Like, you know, stay away from it. Yeah, you know, we've the said, best we've... advice I could have to those people is just control your emotions. Like, I we're we're human. Yeah. It's gonna happen. You know, so we're gonna have everyone's gonna have their bad days. Everyone's gonna feel like that sometimes. Like, yeah. even myself. Like, as much as I hate being negative and critical, um, you know, I have my days where shit gets to me, and. And then I go up and I record something and I'm like, God damn it. Like that's on the internet forever. And it's like, I just wasn't in a good mood that day. Or, you know, there's stuff happening behind the scenes that really wouldn't, you wouldn't understand co- the context of where I'm coming from. And that happens, uh, you know, all the time. <laughs> so it's, it is what it is. But, um, Oh dude, I have so many bad days. Like, I mean, like I'm like, uh, as much as I try to be positive here and like have a positive outlook, you know, on games cast and whenever I'm doing anything that's going to be public, you know, for the most part, I wake up in a bad mood every day, headache, I'm tired, you know, and like, and take, you know, it takes about a pot of coffee to get over that. And uh, man, sometimes I wake up in a bad mood, and I and I look. The first thing I do is I look at the comments on the channel, and I'm like, "Fuck you, block! Fuck you, block! Fuck you, block!" And I just have a day like that, right? And so that's why, like every few months, I go, well, "Let's let's rectify me being a jerk, right?" And like, let's give everybody a second chance. And I'm sure they didn't mean what they said, and I was just overreacting. Um, and so, uh, you know, it, it, we we're all human, and that, and that's and that's a hard thing for some people to admit um, for yes. about, the, about themselves and about us, right? Because it's easy to look at us and go, oh, who the fuck cares about some talking heads on, on YouTube? And like, if you don't like the talking heads, man, what were you doing like all horrible. through the 80s? Um, <laughs> that was a horrible, also, it's a horrible joke. You shouldn't have laughed at that, but thank you. <laughs> no, no, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> it was a pity laugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway. Uh, Rice in the chat with the five quid says, fantastic award show, guys, and big W for the mental health shout out. Uh, question, new PS, uh, sorry, also, thank you, Rice. Uh, new PSVR2 owner here. How do you guys clean your lenses? Any water slash lens solution? No, no, don't, don't use liquid. No, nope. no, a microfiber cloth. Yep. Um, I have, shoot, I, don't, I get a 30 yeah. pack during the PSVR one era of microfiber cloths from Amazon. It was like 25, 30 bucks, something like that. I forget what it was. And it just sits on a shelf. In every month or so, Tornado loves microfiber cloths apparently. So she'll find it and she'll grab it and she'll go hide it in the corner somewhere and I'll never find it. And so, like, I just, then I just grab another one uh, off out of the pack and I use a dry, clean, dry microfiber cloth. Dude, some people use the same microfiber cloth the entire PSVR1 generation. Like Ugh. the entire PSVR1 generation, <laughs> right? And That's I'm like, too long. yeah, but I'll, t- I'll tell you this. Um, I, I, I've, I've said it before, I'll say it again. I love my real optics lenses. Um, and so not only are those protecting the real lenses, right? Because they like mag- magnetize on above on top of them. So they're protecting the real lenses, but they're also super easy to clean. So you just pop, pop them off, wipe it down, boom, pop it right back on, right? You get to hold the whole thing in your hands. So you're not like holding the whole headset while you try to clean. And even if you don't need a prescription, I would recommend picking that up, uh, in order to protect your yeah. actual lenses. And get the magnet ones. Get the the real optics, like he said. Um, the magnet ones are so much better. Uh, I use the VR Rock, and uh, you can get a discount using VR Rock. 
exclusive code AJPSVR. Also, for the microfiber, uh, you can use like any microfiber like this for the lenses. Did Rocco um, get that for you? You didn't move from your <laughs> desk. Rocco, get me a microfiber cloth. Good boy. Good boy. Yeah, enjoy it. Um, you can get one of these. They also make, they also sell some for really cheap, like online or at Walmart. Um, they have like bigger microfibers that look like, uh, they kind of look like small towels, like hand towels. Uh, those are okay too. But yes, only use dry microfiber cloths for lenses. And then uh, for my rubber stuff, I use alcohol free baby wipes. Um, Oh God, I need to, I need to get that because you, you, you said, you said for my rubber stuff and I was like, your rubber stuff. And I was like, oh yeah, the part of mine that smells because I sweat when I'm exercising and working yes. out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. I should yeah, and I, remind I wipe me to get it down that. before, before and after every use. Um, I just, yeah. Cause if you don't like, yeah, like sweat or grease, like, you know, skin oil, I should say yeah. oils, uh, all sorts of gunk can build up in there. If you don't keep it clean, keep, keep it clean. Yep. Keep it clean. Hi, guys. One of the many reasons uh, we sh you should come join our Discord is because you can leave viewer takeover questions over there. Um, that is... Um, uh, <laughs> what? Wipes. <laughs> Nothing, dude. Izzard is, is a maniac. He said wipes for alcohol-free babies. <laughs> <laughs> babies shouldn't be alcohol-free. Uh, <laughs> or families uh, with I'm, kids I'm sorry. shouldn't be alcohol-free. I'm confused by the whole thing. I don't know. Alcoholic babies. Anyways, I, if I had a baby, I would be drunk all the time. That's all I got to say. Cause I would just be like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how I got myself into this situation. There's no way of getting out of this situation without ending up on the nightly news. And, uh, I am miserable. So let me drink my way out of it. Um, this is what not everybody is destined to have kids, AJ. And I think I'm, I think I'm not destined. They, they say like at a certain cheers. point in your life, like, <laughs> cheers. Is that, is that a beer? That. <laughs> that is a beer. Oh, I'm so jealous, man. <laughs> I'm so jealous because that sounds fantastic right now. But the coffee is doing the trick too. Um, I've got beer and water. I'm ready to go. Yeah. Pair of the dog. It's just, I was waiting, dude. I was just waiting to, uh, you know, for that, that moment in my life to happen where I was like, I was like, oh yeah, man, I do, I do want to like raise somebody and, 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 and create life. I mean, it's like fucking magical. And I'm like, yeah, that's too much magic for me. <laughs> I, I can't stand kids. Yeah. Yeah. So, Sorry for the, except for dead ringer juniors. Those yep. are the only, those yeah. are my kids as far as I'm just, yeah. like, I've, I've got a niece and nephew. I've got a niece and nephew and they are like two of the most chill kids you could possibly ask for. Right. And I'm children still by proxy. Yeah. Children yeah. by proxy. Yep. I'm, <laughs> I'm super funny. happy with that. That is good enough for me. Um, they're, they're, they're super chill and I still can't imagine somebody relying on you to live. Right. If you don't feed me, I might die. I was like, Oh shit. Like luckily tornado feeds herself. She knows where the bag is. She dumps it out. You know, it says her whole thing. It's great. I don't think kids are nearly uh, as dexterous. But yeah, you want to uh, come join our Discord because that's where you can leave viewer takeover questions. You get your show, uh, you can get your question on the show without ever uh, paying us a penny. Although we do appreciate you uh, leaving tips here, so we, we can read your comment live on the show. Uh, but goodbye, bird, over on our Discord hashtag viewer takeover oh. of the flat games that came out in 2023. The flat games, AJ. Did you know there were flat games that came out in 2023? I did. Yeah, apparently a lot. There were no, there was no time for it. There's no time for flat screen games. Fucking old, outdated, nonsensical, 2D pancake. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, what would be your top five wish list for getting a VR port? Mine, according to Goodbye Bird, is Robocop, Viewfinder, Ooh. Alan Wake 2, Dead Space Remake, and Killer Frequency. Okay, I forgot Avatar, so now it's six games. Damn. I don't Dude, know what's killer frequency. All, I got to look this up. I, I don't know what that is. And then there was like one other, I don't think I know what it is, but like, yeah, ro I mean, Robocop or even the avatar game, like that would be, um, pretty sweet. Uh, well, the good news is we got one of them. <laughs> we got resident evil four, which we're going to be doing a complete deep dive review today on. Um, uh -oh. is that what we're doing today? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a spoiler cast. So, yep. um, okay. no stone unturned if possible. Uh, dude, personally, personally, mm. Armored Core. Oh, like, was that, it Armored Core hear, 6? Is that what it was? Yeah, I don't, I don't hear a lot of people talking about that Armored Core game, but I know, you know, it's, it's made by From Software and, um, it looked pretty awesome. Um, but yeah, it'd probably be between that, between Armored Core or RoboCop for me. 
I, I'm, I, I looked up Killer Frequency, and here's the trailer for anyone curious. I'm curious. I'll be watching this. Um, Owl Lake 2 would be a good one as well. Yeah. Oh, it looks like Killer Frequency is a, um, it looks like some kind of adventure game, like your exploration, picking stuff up. Uh, it looks like graphics are Team 17. It looks like a little, uh, a little stylized, almost like almost cell shaded. It looks like it's more, more realistic cell shaded look. Um, like Borderlands style. <laughs> uh, oh, even a little bit more detailed than that, maybe. I don't know. Mm. It's, I'd have to see side by side, I think. Um, this is interesting. Oh, uh, Huh, now I'm really curious because I don't know I don't know how much of this is okay. Well, I'm I'm definitely intrigued by this, and uh, and and I I want to I want to watch a review after Gamescast because this could be this looks like it could be fun, um, dude. I I don't have top five. I really don't. I don't have a, I don't have five games. I think that came out flat screen that that off the top of my head I'd be like yes I need to play those in VR. Um, he, my guess, AJ, is that there's a hundred indie games that came out this year for the flat screen that I am not familiar with, right? Just like games that I'm like, oh yeah, I didn't even know those existed, but I'd love to play them. But because you know our uh, our beat is the VR space, uh, they're not even on my radar, which is kind of a bummer. But so I, I, I picked three really big ones, and that's obviously Dead Space remake that we just talked about. Yeah. Uh, you know, because I, I played that game five times on PlayStation 3. I, I, I platinumed oh, it. Wow. Yeah. Um, I screwed up. I screwed up on like one or two of my playthroughs. And so I, it took me five times, I think, to beat it um, or to get the platinum. And at that point, I was like, I don't need to play this game again unless it's VR. That's the only way I'm going to play it again. Like, I'm good. Uh, Baldur's Gate 3, obviously. I haven't played a good uh, meaty RPG in a very long time and people saying it's one of the greatest games ever made not even the best RPG ever made but one of the greatest games ever made so I'm like yeah. yep put that in VR and, and let me absorb that uh, and then Metroid Prime Remastered is a nice cheat because <laughs> that game came out 20 years ago on GameCube <laughs> yeah Metal Gear Metal Gear Solid remake collection or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll take that too. Right. Uh, but, but boy, like Metroid Prime, like absolutely one of the best contenders on a Nintendo console for, for VR treatment. Uh, and so I would, pff, I would absolutely love to be Samus and first person VR uh, running around. Like, it, I, I always thought the controls in that game was like good. But in VR, I think it'd be so much more intuitive. So I'd be down. Chat seems to like Armored Core 6 quite a bit. Nice. Yeah, I'd like to know how it sold because it came out, you know, obviously during a time where there's tons and tons of stuff to play. Um, awesome Tatum says, Killer Frequencies, you play as a radio DJ who has to solve a murder case. I'm down. That's pretty cool. Yep. That's actually a very cool concept. Oh, Fox Die Infected says, Killer Frequencies on Quest. So maybe we get a port in the future. Things are looking oh. up, AJ. <laughs> yeah. 2024 could be the best year ever. <laughs> But is it like Quest Native or is it like Quest with PC VR or Quest with Sciadap Lab, whatever it's called? Uh, that's a good question. But, <clears throat> but dude, I mean, you know, not not to get way off topic, but uh, the, the Unreal Injector is out now, and so the people are just talking like like crazy about all of the uh, about all, all the different games they've tried uh, in VR using this uh, Unreal VR injector, and uh, man. I, I, I hope I hope that Wes has had time because Wes is our PC guy. Obviously, um, I hope that Wes has had time to play a bunch of these games and try a bunch of these games out uh, because I know that the, our community is curious and uh, and I'm curious as well. I'm I'm not I'm not interested in you know PC gaming and so I'm not going to be doing it personally. But I am very curious. He says Quest Native, so uh, that's a good thing. Thanks, cool. Boxdie. Yeah, it's it's a good year for. I mean. Could have been stronger in terms of sales, but it was generally a good year for, for VR in terms of content, at least, and headsets. Yeah. Um, and yeah, another capping off the year with that Unreal Engine 5 injector. Um, I haven't, I'm waiting to hear more feedback on it. Like, I was like, oh my God, if this is how it, amazing it sounds, like, you know, it's, I don't think it's to the point to where it's as amazing as it sounds just yet, but it is like a good proof of concept. And from, um, and I'm sure over time, as things get tweaked and whatever, um, it will it'll improve. But um, well, and I, I think more than anything, it's it, like you said, it's kind of like good proof of concept. So I, I think what's good about it is that uh, with zero effort, uh, you know, games 
certain games, uh, developers can see people raving about the VR versions of their games that they haven't even implemented VR support into. And so they go, yeah. well, if we, if we did a, you know, an official VR version of our game, it obviously works. People are loving it just, you know, with this, with this pretty basic mod. So we could absolutely uh, turn this around and, and sell it to people on Quest, sell it to people on PSVR too, and, and give an official version on PC VR where like it's really VRAF, right? Rather than using like a gamepad. Um, yeah, so. that's the hope is that it ha it inspires developers to, you know, jump into the VR scene, especially if people see like their game blowing up because of some VR mod or something. That's the hope. Um, we haven't really seen that translate a bunch yet, um, but you know, any any progress is progress for sure. Uh, Jim Perona in the chat with the $2 tip says, here to defend Brian Paul's talking head joke. Hashtag, I chuckled. Thank goodness. <laughs> I think, to me, I like the idea more of companies actually having a vi viable source um, by creating VR modes, growing an ecosystem that actually, you know, produces, like, lots of revenue and, and expands an actual, like... Um, capitalist market kind of thing um i think that's a healthier growth for vr but again this can still th there's still nothing wrong with this like like this can i only see it hopefully hopefully helping right that's the hope that's the hope um i think so dude i think 2024 is going to be a really interesting year i think that uh we are uh we're in, we're in a precarious situation right now. I, I don't, you know, I don't want to be negative or anything, um, but with FCE closing and, uh, you know, obviously like, I don't know, like maybe, maybe I'm alone on this, but like, I, I, I think, I think I, a lot of the community, I said this during, you know, the introduction to the award show, um, and, and probably Sony expected PSVR two sales to be much stronger like that, the, that, you know, the, all this time that meta had, uh, spent, you know, millions and millions of dollars on marketing and like getting VR into people's hands and on people's heads. I, I, I really thought that by proxy sales of PSVR two were going to be much, much, much stronger. This was going to be a game changer for the industry. And so what, and, and that didn't really happen in year one. We don't know specific figures, but it's, that's sort of the vibe we're getting. And so the vibe I'm getting is that indie studios have a much better chance than like big companies and stuff right now. Oh, um, for sure. It's been the same way, I think, since the beginning. Yeah, yeah. And that's why when the Quest came out, it was so great for the VR industry because it was like, hey, these like, you know, independent developers, teams of one to three people or whatever are able to have a smash hit and make profit. But you see what happened, what's happened with like big companies investing, you know, millions and millions of dollars. Um, and then it's like, it's hard for them to make their money back. And obviously, like, I think in the long term, like that, w it will eventually get there. But I think we're still on our way there right now. But the more, regardless, the more times that Sony you know, it, uh, funds a Resident Evil or a Gran Turismo caliber game um, or some, you know, one of these VR modes for these games. Every time they do that uh, for a popular IP, it's definitely going to, you know, that's one of those little growth bumps that that keeps pushing VR along um, one of the several many. Yeah, I mean, so that, that's, that's why I'm curious about this year, right? Because like, like, our, well, like this how... year's a weird one. This year's a weird in what, one. In what sense? Like, well, there's, I think usually we know a little bit more about what's going on with Sony. Usually there's a little bit more black and white roadmap. And right now there's a lot of unknowns as to like what direction they're going. What, you know, there's, there's almost like, um, like, the, you know, there's a reshuffle uh, going on and it's, it's a little bit different of a situation. And I think we're just going to have to be, have to recognize that this year we may need to be a little bit more patient um, to kind of uh, let the let the the cards shuffle up a little bit and um, and then uh, you know I don't know like of course I think we're gonna get I, as always we're gonna get a couple surprises like some amazing things um, but I also think that uh, you know. Uh, maybe several. I wouldn't be surprised if we get announcements this year 
for stuff coming like next year um just because of the all the changes going on and whatnot and but i'm hopeful that we'll we'll get some surprises for this year yeah oh for sure the, the, like i i <clears throat> when I say I'm concerned, like this year, I think is going to be a big year for VR one way or another. It's going to like really kind of start telling us what the future is going to look like. Uh, I saw Tatum in the chat mm -hmm. mentioning that like new headsets are coming out. Apple's got their uh, mixed reality headset coming out. It, there's there's a lot of big things happening in the VR industry, but until those things are out and until those things hit the market, we don't know what kind of game changer those are going to be. And so that's that's more what I'm kind of looking at and saying we're kind of patiently waiting. Uh, and, and, and seeing like, is this going to be like this big banner year where VR takes off, explodes and all these different uh, big companies like Apple are suddenly getting into the space or is it going to all this stuff is all this stuff going to come out and everyone's going to go, yep, VR still cool, but like not not the game changer yet. Uh, and so. Dude, I, I mean, CES is like right around the corner. We're like days away from it. Um, you know, if Sony's got a big title, like a big um, like a big hybrid or, or a deal with somebody for a game coming out in 2024, like, you know, especially in the next few months, I think that would be an interesting place to, to show it off. You know, the, the rumors of a Sony showcase in December or state of play in December obviously turned out not to be true. Oh, as every, shocker. As every <laughs> single fucking rumor. Who could have seen that coming? Who yep. could have said that that was probably, don't be surprised if that doesn't happen. I wonder who said that out there. I mean, everybody said <laughs> it, right? But like, you know, we... I mean the the it was so i don't know man yeah the the media is is lost its damn mind uh, over the last two years three years i th i think we've got you know yeah and i think the thing is like we really got to stop believing the people like putting out these these rumors it's like there there have been clear uh people who have information from the industry and then there are people who are just piggybacking trying to take credit for those things trying to take credit for those leaks and, and people trying to um just yeah. sp like throw random shit at the wall like I'm not, I don't want to name names because I'm not that kind of person. Although in my head, I am that kind of person, and I desperately <laughs> want to call it. Right? Um, and, um, I'm not that kind of person. I take the high road. No, you fucking don't, Brian. <laughs> Turn the camera off for since, five seconds, and you're gonna start talking when? shit. Right? Not, no, no, no. I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm so full of shit. Um, <laughs> and so, um, but yeah, and, and so, so I think it's really clear that it's like some of these people just don't know what they're talking about, and it's it. it, it we just gotta like tune these people out, right? And you try to give people a chance after chance after chance. You're like, nope, it's not happening. You you don't you don't know so uh so i think there's like two i, I mean insider gaming like is, this is insidergaming.com if you haven't been like is a new uh website that, that popped up this year from reliable leakers i i, I want to say please don't fucking tell me i've got these names wrong sometimes i get the wrong name mm, i don't want to say anybody's name because i feel like I, I i sometimes confuse the right people with the wrong people um but it's a it's a good place for for like for leaks from, from inside the industry uh I mean, I, I, I think, I think we are prime for some more reveals for PSVR two, and that's because I think we're getting, whether we know it or not, Sony has Sony has showed their cards, and they have, and they have realized that if you look at the PS three and PS four era, even the PS two era, Sony would like just release game after game after game after game after game after game after game and gave us all these options, right? Spent millions of dollars developing games, and then, and then sort of. Uh, and, and sort of cannibalize themselves by giving us too many options. Be like, well, I'd rather play this game over that game, right? It, but but the, but they're both Sony published titles, so it's like, well, why? I I think we sort of understand now what Sony's doing, and it's like they're only going to show off a couple games at a time, and then get you excited about those games, get you to buy those games, and then and then wait and then reveal a couple more games, right? Because that means sales for each game way higher. And they're not competing with themselves anymore. And so that's kind of in, in, in the VR space, that's 10 times as necessary, right? Because the market's smaller. You need everybody with a VR headset to buy Resident Evil 4. Everybody, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and so and so wait until after Resident Evil 4 is out and then and then announce what's coming in a few more months. Right. Yeah, I feel like, I feel like this is a little bit let people get caught up. Um, yeah. because most of us here and, you know, are usually way ahead of everything. Most people don't, you know, not everybody buys every game day one. Um, not everybody buys a PSVR two day one, obviously. Like some people are just getting theirs over the holidays. Welcome by the way. Um, but yeah, you gotta let things breathe a little bit. You gotta let things get caught up. You don't want to cannibalize your own sales. 
And uh, yeah, I, I think you're you're right. Uh, like they, they're gonna, you know, keep relying on indies to kind of keep the the, the consistency, and then you know just have some uh, some big surprises for us here and there. Yeah, lots of third party, probably lots of leaning on third party uh, funding and uh, to to get third party to add like VR modes or create VR titles for us. Oh yeah, spending ten million dollars to get like Village or RE four in. In, on the PSVR too, they should that just is, keep doing that. Just yeah. keep doing that. <laughs> yep. I mean, and they and they should do that internally. Like, like, like yeah. some like there's got to be a, a you know a, a small team within Sony that is that that could take The Last of Us and give us a you know I mean I I say free VR upgrade for it, but fuck it, like make make it a free upgrade for The Last of Us Part One remastered, right? Give everyone a reason to actually buy that game again. Um, cause that's what I said. I played blast of us two or three times, uh, and I'm not playing it again until it's VR. Just same, same thing I said about dead space earlier in the show. And so, well, I, yeah, I think, I think the reception that resident evil four got was big. I think that was a big sign, very telling for Sony that people like these games with just VR modes added on, even if they're added on later, you know, if you got to make a couple of tough choices, a couple of sacrifices here and there, um, when the overall product is as high quality as possible and, um, and it's, you know, a, a, an actual like official title that's really like extremely polished, um, that people, people like that for sure. And it's full games, full, you know, full games. Sorry. Sirens on my end. I was trying to turn the mic down. Um, yeah, I, I agree, man. I agree wholeheartedly. Uh, as, as great yeah. as Call of the Mountain was, I know that you weren't as big of a fan as I was. Um, it, it's pe- people walked away disappointed, saying, "Man, wish I was a full fledged Horizon game." Um, and as like, oh, too much climbing or whatever. So, like, you know, like yeah. when when it could, would have cost you way less money to just bring a Horizon game into VR and, and make alterations as needed, um, you know that 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 should have sent a clear message, I think, to Sony. Yeah. Um, Samson143. Hey, AJ. I want to talk to Samson. (laughs) Uh, The new stand up. Fly me to the moon like that bitch I was crammed in. I don't know. That's it. Yeah, you nailed it. Okay, cool. $5 (laughs) tip says Happy New Year in 2024. I hope to finally try PSVR 2. That, that's that's a great New Year's resolution, Samson. (laughs) Yay. Yep. Uh, Samson, yes. PSVR. I'm surprised you haven't. You've been with us. You've been commenting for a while, man. Um, so thank you for for your support and uh, and all that. Um, yeah, I can't wait for you to try PSVR two as well. Spoiler alert: it's fucking awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, it is fucking awesome. Um, yeah, I, I mean the the support from this community has been amazing. Like the fact that there are people who have, were watching the channel for months before buying a PSVR 2. People have said that we're the reason they bought a PSVR 2. Um, people who, you know, are still on PSVR 1 and, uh, you know, still watching the channel, even though the stuff we're talking about is not relevant to them yet. Um, you know, something sort of like, hey, this is something that you're going to be looking forward to in the future. Um, and so uh, I just want to say thank you. Like, the support has been amazing. It's fascinating to me that you guys are watching even without a PSVR 2 headset. Uh, yeah. Y'all are 100% stuff. the reason that we still do this uh absolutely um but yeah i mean speaking of the future brian um you know we we, we we have kind of a general idea of what's gonna work moving forward as in terms of games but um i'll tell you what i'd be really interested in and again i don't feel like i feel like this is something maybe a conversation for next year <laughs> i know we just got to this year uh <laughs> hold on let me, let me take notes let me let me let me write up the run of show for january 1st I'm, I'm, 2025 I'm thinking about the future um but i will be curious <laughs> to see if they how they expand on the features side of psvr2 i mean they've you know eric lampel did an interview recently and he did talk about that the sales did are doing okay like they're doing fine they're right. good i i think good is the word he used um, but they, but he did say that they expected VR gaming to be having a much bigger impact. And you can see what, in terms of Sony's strategy, what they tried was like, let's just double down on games. Let's just make sure there's games and there's nothing else. Well, um, that's created now this 
this kind of different ecosystem where you've got PSVR 2, where it has like these amazing, polished, official uh, games by big companies and studios and stuff, um, as well as support for, you know, the, the smaller indie devs and, and indie games. Um, but then this is, of course, one of the strengths of like the MetaQuest, uh, the, uh, MetaQuest 3. Where it's like, you know, you, you boot it on, it's got a 3D home screen, it's got movie players and stuff. And it's like, you know, my preference, my primary reason for VR is the gaming. I mean, that's what generally interests me the most. That being said, I do think it would be wise of Sony to consider investing in other things to just keep you in the headset. Reasons to keep the headset on. Things like, you know additional features like movie players, cinema apps, things like that. So I am hoping in the future, luckily these are things, I think the hardware is fantastic, obviously. Um, but I will, I am hoping that they eventually, you know, find some ways to work in some additional features, some additional ways to use the VR, the, the PSVR too. I don't want them doubling down on, on a bunch of useless nonsense, but just to have some additional features would be nice, even though, games are the most important yeah no i mean game games are absolutely the most important and honestly if, if we go through this entire generation and all we're getting is awesome games fine right like this is i yeah. i have i have a hundred ways to watch movies i have a hundred ways to do all, all, all the different things i have ways to you know be social and in and and, and and communicate in a social space whether it be virtual or not i have, I have a lot of ways to do that yes i i do think it's important for us to have a theater app i think big screen um you know, it's taken off and, and, and having a way to like go and hang out with your friends and do that. Great. Uh, I think, you know, we all were really hoping that, uh, Sony would announce something about VR, uh, about PlayStation home in VR, that kind of thing. Give us a virtual space to exist in all of this stuff would be amazing. So I don't want anybody thinking I don't want that to happen, but honestly, like I spend so much time in the headset playing games. That like I don't see personally, I mean, and I think I'm I might be in a unique situation. Maybe you're in the same unique situation, AJ, where like we spend so much time because of like we're reviewing games and trying to play everything that comes out. Like I mean, sometimes I take off the headset and go, okay, that's it for the day. I'm gonna watch it. Watching a movie when laying down in bed, seeing the screen from a distance is actually like a a, a nice kind of hits the reset button for my brain a little bit, gives my eyes a break and everything. So. Uh, I'm to that point. Yeah. You know, 600 games later, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, it takes a long time to get to that point though. And yeah, I mean, I, I, I agree. I, I do enjoy like, it's, it's really healthy to, to kind of go and do other things and then come back. You have a, a better appreciation for what it is we're actually getting. Um, it certainly helps a lot. That being said, like I said, any additional reason, you know, if, uh, games can be very physical. Sometimes you're really tired and after a long day of work and you just want to relax and, you know, finding ways to keep you in the headset, but still being able to relax, uh, I think is, would be a nice compliment to all the, uh, the gaming, uh, as well. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. It, listen, life isn't all about me. It's hard for me to remember that sometimes. <laughs> so for yeah, for the sake of everybody, I obviously want all of these apps to come out, and um, and and I and I do think it would be really fun. Sometimes you know, like I, dude, the everybody else has gotten back to normal life. I still feel like I'm, uh, you know, I'm 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 hiding out from the world, and uh, and I I sort of got into a, a new routine over the last few years during COVID that I haven't switched back to normalcy. Like I don't go out, you know, every, every day and I don't, and I don't see people. And so, yeah, so I, I do think that being like, like going on a date in big screen, like to, to go to the theater, right. And like sit next to somebody and, and, and watching a horror movie, because that's, that's the best way to consume horror movies as far as I'm concerned in a theater. Right. And uh, being able to do that, uh, and, and watching a movie for the first time that way, I, I think is ideal. And so that would convince me to definitely experience a, at least a few movies a year in a different way. Um, listen, we get a few more tips and then we do have to uh, get on to our Resident Evil conversation. So yes. just, just a heads up guys, and within the next few minutes we're going to be switching gears and, and heading over that way. Um, we do, obviously want to make sure that, you know, as many of you who wanted to hang out, 
I, lo- I love that you muted your, yourself, but like I, it, I still wait for you to finish coughing before I continue my sentence. <laughs> Why? What's the purpose of me going out of my way to mute it? <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, we want to make sure you guys had like a nice normal games cast before we dove into something that like most of you couldn't, uh, you know, participate in. Uh, nothing. It better be most of you. Nothing like alienating ninety percent of your I'm audience. Gonna, you're also, I'm going to get on. You. <laughs> like, why don't you? Why don't you finish Resident Evil Four yet? It's been three weeks. <laughs> right? Four weeks. <laughs> oh my god. Um, yeah, no, what for real. Did it come out? What was the date it came out? I, I don't, the seventh. The seventh. Uh, yeah, the uh, the eighth. I think eighth. There you go. Yeah. Um, dude, I only finished it last night. I finished it last night. I I, I was like, oh, I probably have twenty more minutes to go. I was so close to the end. It took me. It took me another ninety minutes, dude. I, I'm I'm close to <laughs> I'm close to eighteen hours in that game. I think it took me seventeen and a half hours to beat the first time. Mm. We'll get to it in a second. Um, don't. Yeah. But don't. We just wanted to give everyone a heads up. Uh, if, if you're going to be tuning out, just make sure that like, we don't want to spoil anything. The game's for you. twenty years old. We're not really going to be spoiling much. Hey, we're, listen. I mean, listen. No, yeah. I mean, we're going to be talking about like the VR mode. Yeah, we're going to be talking about a lot about the game. Of it's, all games, uh, story you could stuff. potentially spoil yeah. a 25 year old game is like, you know, it's like, I don't think, I don't think that anything story wise is going to be too much of a surprise. That- Listen, and also, here's a, here's another surprise. The story's fucking terrible. No one <laughs> no, cares about the story. No, it's not You're, a terrible if, story. If you want to no, hang so out, and, and t- we will spoil no, it no, all no. for you. I wish, and it's I wish terrible. I could mute so. you. I wish I could Uno reverse card and mute you instead. Because <laughs> sometimes you need to be muted. <laughs> <laughs> I don't disagree with that. And if you ever have me on your channel, feel free. <laughs> Do what needs to be done. Just on mute the whole time. <laughs> I don't disagree with you. Some, sometimes we end the show and I go, maybe I should have been muted the whole time. <laughs> uh but okay yeah. but i guess you said you wanted to get some tips and then we'll get into the yeah spoiler for, cast for sure uh yeah. living legend with the canadian five dollar tip says happy 2024 game cats here's to a better year and hopefully better for flat screen and psvr2 games one love one love uh he also adds another tip canadian five dollar tip says aj any <laughs> any news when your beanie will get a funko pop Funko Pop. I don't know why I pronounce that that way. Funko Pop figure. I would pre-order that in a heartbeat. You do need a Funko Pop. You already kind of look like a Funko Pop. I think Funko Pops are dumb. <laughs> oh, here we go. There goes that sponsorship. <laughs> sorry. No, sorry. We're taken by MeUndies. I apologize, uh, Funko Pop. I think Funko Pops look so dumb with their beady eyes. I actually do have one. I do have one, but that's because it actually has eyes. It's, and you know what it is? Wait, which one has eyes? Oh, oh man, hold on. I have, from one of the greatest, the greatest Sonic game of all time, I have the Werehog. Oh, God, I forgot about the Werehog. <laughs> I have the limited edition Werehog Funko Pop. That's the only Funko wow. Pop I have. Okay, I do have a, I do have a, um, uh, Ash as well from Evil Dead. Oh, cool. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I've got, um, <clears throat> I've, it, I, I just have a couple. I got, I got, um, Max from Where the Wild Things Are. Um, that was because, uh, my band, when, when I, when I was starting the YouTube channel, I was also, I had a, I had a band. It was a three piece, became a two piece, whatever. It was just me and a cello player for the most part. Um, and, and our band was called Max's Monsters, obviously based on Where the Wild Things Are. And, um, <laughs> And so I, I had that as kind of like our little logo. Uh, and then I did, I get, I got super into attack on Titan for a minute. And so I had like, I got two or three of those Funko pops and, and then I like, and then attack on Titan went away and I was like completely forgot to watch it when it came back. Uh, and then, uh, I think I have a bat man. What's the bet? What's the Batman? Do you remember the Batman animated series? I mean, we all remember the series, but what was the one where like, there was a Batman and like his skin came off and we found out he was like a robot or something like, do, do you remember this? It's like super hazy, but it was one of the best episodes. Um, and they actually made a Funko pop based on that one episode, uh, nice. with, with the metal, uh, metal I don't Batman. remember exactly. I just remember like a factory and yeah, I mean, maybe Catwoman in it or something. Yeah they, were, yeah. they were making, um, they were making like copies, like clones, robotic clones of all, all of these different people yep. in, the, in gotham city yeah trying to replace everyone or something i forget what it was but that was a cool ass episode and so i got that funko pop um okay i think i think we're caught up 
All right, which means, guys, it is time to shift gears, and we're going to talk about uh, Resident Evil 4 Remake. This begins the spoiler cast. Uh, thank you, everybody, who uh, who stuck it out with us through the beginning of the show uh, and, uh, and had no intention on sticking it out with us through the second half of the show. Uh, we appreciate you guys showing up, and, uh, and, and we, we don't hold it against you if you leave. We do not want to ruin anything for you. Spoilers! No, Spoilers. not not Mask Resident. of the Phantasm at Tatum. It was it wasn't a movie. It was, it was part of the movies. animated show. Yeah, yeah, it was an episode. Yep. Spoilers. Resident yep. Evil Four. Spoilers. And uh, if you don't want any spoilers, turn it off now. But hopefully, I'm watching the view count. To- the view count just went up by five. People are like five. <laughs> people are tuning in, going, "Are they finally talking about RE Four? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. That's what I figured. That's what I figured. It, it's been enough time for sure um all right man so uh so so listen for first things first i i, I do want to i do kind of want to get this out of the way um uh, we gotta get this fucking uh village stuff off the screen this is this is us shifting gears um i do i do think the story's terrible <laughs> Uh, Scott, <laughs> Scott, 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 Scott. This is the second time Scott has asked us to only spoil the first thirty minutes. We're spoiling the whole thing, so yeah. and, and we and, and I and I understand where you're coming from. You you want it. You want to be here for the whole show. I will fucking love you for that. Um, but 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 it but would save- be so boring and generic if we don't talk about what's actually in the game. Trying right. to avoid spoilers. Right, like, we've sort of I, already done that multiple times yeah. over the last month. Yeah, so, yeah. Right. So please, so please put this, put this in your watch list and come back to it in a couple of weeks when you, uh, when, when you finish the show, um, fingers crossed. Or just let us spoil it because who cares? <laughs> bad, bad Robo says spoilers for a 20 year old game. It's, do, do you know how many people in our community have said, I, I never played RE4 ever. This is my first time experiencing the game. I never played yeah. the original and haven't played the remake. I'm playing this because it's a VR game. Uh, and so <laughs> flipping nuggets. I love it. What the fuck is a Funko Pop? <laughs> I think I think spoilers, you know, yeah, for this one it's it's based on a game. It's very accurately based on the original game which came out 20 years ago. Um and you know, I don't know. This isn't like there's not like any I mean there's story elements, but it's like these aren't like huge gasping tw- twists that are in the, you know, it's not like spoiling the end of like a M Night Shyamalan movie or something. Right. Uh, it's it's like uh, it's more about just all the cool shit that's in the game. Right. Um, but I still hate the story. I still hate the story, and, I'm, and I want to start off with this first and foremost, right? Because it does it does feel like a game that's from We're off to a great start. <laughs> yeah. No. I mean, listen, listen. I I love the story in the original Resident Evil, RE One, PS One, right? And, and 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 maybe maybe the second game. Maybe even the third game, but really, like that is that is kind of where shit stops, um, because it just got it got convoluted, it got ridiculous. Characters like I don't know, it, it just got all over the place. Um, and this game specifically feels like a game that came out twenty years ago, story wise, because, dude, I mean, this is the same story that Final Fight had, like Final Fight from like the Super Nintendo era, right? Oh, the president, the president's daughter has been kidnapped. Go get her. And I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ! I love this. I love the I love this. It's it's look, it's an action adventure with like, you know, horror elements to it. It's all all Resident Evil has been crazy and over the top and sometimes campy, sometimes cheesy. And I think that's kind of like the charm of it. Um Agreed. Agreed. What makes Resident Evil cool is not necessarily the story, but I do feel like, hey, like if you actually look at the lore of this game, if you actually dive deeper into some of the characters, it's like they're more than just, I don't know, they're a little bit more than just regular plot devices. Like they're actually like kind of cool, likable, let's just say likable characters. Um, and then there's some really cool, like, you know, boss fights, boss enemy designs. Um, and then, of course, you're playing the game as uh, Leon, which is like the most popular Resident Evil character of all time. Right. Sadly, <laughs> <laughs> right. Sadly, I think Leon's highlight was Resident Evil Two. I love the way they introduced him in, in that game, and and I only played the first couple hours of the remake, so I don't know what they changed in that. Um, but man, I, I'm definitely hoping that they go RE2 remake uh, for the next. VR game that Capcom brings to PSVR 2 yes. is going to be another one um, because 
Dude, I, I, I know we've been over this and, and probably over this too much, but I do want to reiterate that like the things that I hated about this game, like the things that I really strongly just was averse to, you know, all of the third person stuff, going into third person for ladder climbing, going to third person for the roundhouse kick, going into third person for whatever, right? For in the 2D cutscenes, just like, you know, it, it felt like a step backwards from Village at first, but man, oh man, like it just, it just gave this game a different feel to it ultimately and so bit. you know so i was playing last night going getting through the last hour and a half two hours and and you know every time leon pushed through a door and it went into third person uh and, and so you saw it from behind uh, the th those type of things are climbing ladders it's something you get so used to and it's yeah. and it's and it's fine like it's totally yeah. fine and, and i and i actually there there was a part of me it, it sounds like bullshit but i started to kind of enjoy the way they did it um, and, I, and I just liked that it gave it a different feel, a more actiony vibe than than Village had. Village and Village and RE4 are surprisingly drastically different games. Yeah, we've beaten the whole third person thing uh, to death, so I'm actually not even going to really talk about that a lot today because it's like you said. I mean, it the, does it like it could be more immersive staying in first person, right. but at the but by the end of the game, at the end of the day. Like, that is such a minor thing about this game that, like, it really... No, there is way too much cool shit in this game um, to talk about. Like, I'm not going to sit here and, and talk about nope. that for, you know, God knows how long again, because we've already addressed that. And uh, there is way too much cool shit in this game for that to even be uh, kind of like, you know, a, a discussion about it again. So where do you, where do you want to start then? Where do you want to start? We, we well, start you were saying, um, yeah. you know, you were saying that, you know, you don't like the story of this game, um, <laughs> <laughs> and and I and I disagree. So, so this is I where think, you want to start, okay? I, I I I disagree. I think I think the story is fine. It's yeah. just a it's a typical action movie kind of story. Um, the Leon you're playing is now is obviously way different than the Leon in Raccoon City. He was very. Uh, you know, he was a rookie at that time. He was very inexperienced. He was, um, you know, uh, a little bit um, not as competent in some areas and stuff. And, and you know, he was just kind of figuring out what the hell's going on here. He's like, you know, high government official secret agent dude and then gets deployed into some village uh, to rescue the president's daughter. Um, but, yeah, I think I think along the way, I think there's a there's a cool like it's a standard cheesy kind of plot or premise where, you know, basically uh, this uh, evil dude is trying to, he's, he's using this uh, Las Plagas. Um, this, this game takes place in like what Spain um, and some village in like Spain or whatever. And he's infecting with this Las Plagas, which were again, before it was what the T virus, um, so this is like a, a different take on the whole infection thing. Right. Um, but yeah, and he, he's manipulating the villagers and stuff. You you get there, your escorts to the village uh, immediately get attacked and killed, and then you have to kind of fight your way through the village here. Um, and that's where I think we should kick things off, is just entering the village of uh, this, this whole town or whatever, um, which honestly, I've always felt like was kind of the weakest part of the game like the the first two hours of this game have always been kind of my least favorite but that being said and this goes a lot a long way for this game as a whole and the way i feel about this game as a whole is like every time you play this game and the more time you spend in it and the more you explore it um it, it it's just so much fun like it's so much fun and it's really, really well designed. And and even some of the parts that I used to like dread, like the beginning two hours of this game, I'm now like, like I really enjoy replaying those sections like over and over and just kind of uh, taking different approaches. Dude, so, okay. So I don't want to, I don't want to jump to the end of the conversation, but I, like I said, I finished the game last night and mm -hmm. it, w it it is decidedly uh, a much more replayable game than Village. And what oh, I mean, yeah. and what I mean is the VR mode, uh, because I, I think if you played Village on the flat screen, you would debate that with me. But uh, but because this has trophy support, right? I finished the game last night. I think I saw I have twenty five percent of the trophies. Beat, finishing the game on on the default difficulty level. 
there's there's something about the way the fact that you that, that you still that it has full trophy support the fact that uh, it's got new game plus that there are two higher difficulty levels to beat uh, after you finish the default difficulty um, immediately after rolling credits last night I started a new game plus and I said fuck the fuck the next level up I'm gonna go straight to professional like professional yeah. level I'm just gonna do that oh yeah because, that's what I did too because I didn't because I don't think I don't think I found the game too challenging there were moments that like you know I, I, that took me three or four tries but uh, I felt like a lot of that was a little bit of luck um, and yeah I did I felt it was a little easier than I was used to but then looking at my footage like so luckily when you said we were gonna do the spoiler cast I I was like crap I gotta play through this whole game again <laughs> <laughs> I love that, I love that you're like, <laughs> in preparation for an hour-long show I'm going to play a 15-hour game all over well, again <laughs> you know I, I yeah like you know I have to play I have to play or watch things several times to like make it stick in my memory oh same um sometimes and uh yeah, and and so, um, but luckily I had my I have my full playthrough uh, recorded on and just like non commentary footage, and like thank God I did that. And I was like scrolling through it and and uh, like skipping through it, and I was like, wow, like these scenes and these set pieces, um, and like you said, it it seemed easier while I was playing it, mm -hmm. but looking at the footage, looking at myself playing it. I'm like, dude, this looks really like difficult and it really intense. intense. Yeah, it, it, it looks really intense, really difficult. It looks beautiful, mm -hmm. um, very, very impressive visually, just from so many different uh, aspects of it. Um, and yeah, so like, I don't know if it's just like the like if it's because the remake is slightly more accessible, slightly easier than Re Resident Evil games. I think it's because we're playing in VR. Yeah, I, I think there's a little bit of an advantage there. Um, but yeah, but I did restart on the professional difficulty as well. And like you said, man, this game is highly replayable. I mean, with Village, like I wanted to replay it. I was really looking forward to playing through it again. But as I started playing through it again, yep. like I started to fall off it a little bit. This game does not have that same feeling. This game feels like... You know, that's a big thing that separates it is like, wow, this really feels like a game you can just play over and over and like, over. Like it again. was designed for it. Like like Resident right. Evil Seven felt designed for it because of the unlocks, because of the the the, the things that um uh, the, the the collectibles, everything. It just felt like it was designed for it. When Village was brought into VR, it was brought mm -hmm. into VR so that you could play the campaign. And like I, I feel like way too quickly you can you can kind of screw yourself a little bit in village by unlocking the stake and then un unlimited ammo for the stake and, and then suddenly you're like I did that. I, yeah I did the exact same thing I was like this is yeah. awesome but it's ruined the game for me like yeah, it ruined, just ruined one shot experience. kill everything and I have an unlimited amount of ammo for it now yeah. and so uh, and so with this. Uh, I, yeah, I absolutely feel like this was designed for it, designed to to be played and replayed. Um, somebody, in, I saw Robbie Y in the chat ask if, um, if if things carry over in New Game Plus. Yes, and I think that's part of the appeal. This is this is something interesting, AJ. And I didn't know if it was me being fucking oblivious as always, or if this was something that happens in a New Game Plus. So. The first time I played through the game, I was like really taking my time exploring every corner, just like, you know, whatever. And this time I'm like, boom, like, like fucking, you know, put, kick it into like fifth gear. And I am running through environments, just like looking for the next enemy, making sure I pick up whatever I can along the way. And I am just kind of blasting through it and having a really good time doing it. But I get, you know, that very first house you go into where you, you know, where you have your first encounter with the enemy. When you leave that house, uh, it like fades to black. There's a cut scene and then you're outside the house. And so I started yeah. like so so last night on my new game plus on professional I start walking toward the bridge, and I forget I don't know what caused me to turn around, but something caused me to turn around because I was like oh is there something outside the house and I went back and in front of the house there's a shopkeeper, yeah the merchant the merchant H mm -hmm. is he is he there in the origin in in your first playthrough or is he there in your new game plus in order to give you your stuff earlier on in the game um that's a good question he's probably not there because there's a cutscene that cues you you meet him like chapter two or something that's what i thought chapter two chapter three you meet him a little bit in so yeah you're right he probably wasn't there at the time and i did notice some subtle differences like that so yeah there are definitely things that are intentionally altered um on your second playthrough for sure there's uh some of the collectibles like some of the toys 
um, one of the collectibles is like these little, uh, I don't want to say Jack in the box, but they're like bobbleheads or something. Yeah. Yeah. The, those little like, uh, guys, those are actually in new spots on the, on the new game plus as well. So there's really? definitely, so, yeah, you, so are you starting from scratch good. then in terms of like trying to collect them all on new game plus? Yes, I'm on. Well, I'm I'm just playing through it as many times as I want, having some sure. fun. Once I get back, once I get caught up to where I was on my original part one stream, um, I'm probably going to stream the rest of my professional play- playthrough. Um, which I got like one more chapter to go, and then I'm probably going to maybe stream stream it again or something at some point. Bad Robo says all the weapons uh, go to New Game Plus, and you can further upgrade them. Besides, the shopkeeper keeper also has new ones. Yeah, that's so cool. Again, very much yeah. designed to be played and played and, again. And yeah, it's it's like you said. I mean, the the game itself, the pacing and everything, um, it, it works well just in itself to replay it, um, giving you. But then there's also like actual altered things about it, like you said, like like you know the merchant being new spots um the the collectibles the new weapons alternate weapons there's there's a lot going on here there's a lot of unlocks and stuff um as well um so the headbite says uh, i'm on i'm on new game plus and they sum up uh 16 puppets um so uh they don't introduce those for like hours like i think yeah. it was like four or five hours into the game before i before they were like oh here's these collectibles you can find and i was like what like, right. This seems like a real. It seems really late in the game to start introducing those uh, train on my end. What um do do they introduce them earlier in New Game Plus? They must. Well, like I said, yeah, yeah. There's the, yeah. They show up. They show up in like really early on. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, in on New Game Plus, but cool. well, something to keep my eyes open for because, like I said, I'm just fucking running through lightning speed, and like if if I got something to keep my ears and eyes open for, then that's good. I'm down. Yeah um but yeah so so you start out you're going through the village you're 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 basically your escorts get killed right away so you you go through uh you're kind of like just thrown out into the woods and you you're gradually making your way through these little village parts and um yeah you've encountered these lost plagas uh these infected people which again resident evil used to be zombies now it's these lost plagas infected people and they act a lot like zombies, but they're kind of just like crazed. Um, they're kind of like crazed people uh, that that just attack you, like just villagers and whatnot. And um, and then uh, yeah, the they you you go through a couple sections with that, and and it, it's it almost like the first two hours are kind of like it almost feels like an extended like tutorial. Like like where the game, I feel like the the pace is a little slower during this part. It's trying to, it's really intense, but it's introducing you to a lot of stuff. It's getting you familiar with the mechanics, the exploration, a um, couple different enemy types, and the whole time though, man, it's just you're just taking in the view. It's just like, good God, like this is, I mean, this is one of the best looking games um, on PSVR two. Some of the most breathtaking set pieces uh and and that's like the entire game i mean the entire game is like you you start out it looks beautiful and then like just as you keep going it just looks even more beautiful as you go and go on and man i mean the the level of polish that this game has is quite nice i didn't really encounter many bugs it's amazing how much they can have going on on the screen and not like have like any uh, performance issues because they throw a shit ton of stuff going on and it all just performs admirably. Yeah. Um, yeah. I want to talk about weapons real quick uh, because, because yeah. <clears throat> I feel like one of my faults playing through this game uh, for the first time, and, and maybe this is a game fault. I don't know. Uh, was I focused so much, uh, especially, especially for the first half, two thirds of the game on my handgun and my shotgun and like other shotguns came around, like right, the riot gun, whatever. Then there was, um, and there were plenty of other handguns that came around. I, I had my first gun, my first handgun and my first shotgun. And all I cared about was leveling those things up. That was it. I'm like, I'm going to level these two things up. And I'm, and every time I'm, I've got the ability to craft, every time I find uh, resources to make ammo, I'm going to make ammo for one of these two things, which resulted in me never really having a shortage of ammo. 
because I was so focused on two weapons specifically. Um, and so I, I, I feel like I tried out most of the weapons that were available by like, you know, buying them and then reselling them to the shopkeeper, uh, or, uh, or just like loading my save game and be like, I fucking hated that bolt weapon. Um, so just getting, you know, just, uh, pretending like I never did that in the first place. Um, did you, were you a little bit more experimental with your weapon choices or did you kind of have your favorites that you stuck to as well? Yeah, no, I stuck through the first playthrough mainly just upgrading my pistols. Like your pistol is your most important weapon in this entire game. Um, oh, dude, getting the red dot on that thing made it into it practically a sniper rifle, right? Because you can be all clear across the environment, and then you see that little red dot on top of a dude that's only five pixels tall on sitting on top of a building, right? And you and you and you hit him. I think this is that. Yeah, yeah. The, the okay, I have is, a confession. Oh, here we go. So, so you bought the you bought the red dot sight. Oh yeah. So I have a I have a confession. The lasers, the laser, uh, the laser, yeah, laser pointer. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. But that's yeah, what it is. He, he, you can, well, yeah, you can just go to the options and just select an option that says, like, have, like, a laser pointer or something for, like, every gun. And You just turn yeah, it just, on? Like, you don't have to buy, buy an attachment? <laughs> you just turn it on. What? And it's, and it's applied to every single weapon. What? Um, <laughs> yeah, so I was just like, I was like, okay. <laughs> you wonder why it was so easy for you, AJ. Because <laughs> yeah, I it cheated. Made, it, it made a huge difference. Um, yeah, I just, no, I just turned, it was there. It was an option. I didn't cheat. Uh, I just turned it on. And I was like, yeah, this is, this is much nicer. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I did actually turn it off on my professional difficulty, though. Um, yeah. But I bought a laser straight, so, I mean, but, you know. Um, but, yeah, there's an option just to do that. But, <sighs> but yeah, well, man. Uh, so this ahead. is so so. I, I will say, uh, I'm I'm really really glad that at a certain point in the game, um, I, I did branch out. Uh, the um this uh, the stingray rifle, uh, the stingray rifle yeah. is, and, and I know we're going to be jumping around uh, spoiler wise here, story wise. Uh, but I, but I absolutely want to I want to show something off here. People have said, oh, the you know the 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 scope on the sniper yeah. rifle is is blurry, but uh, but mm. what I what I discovered was it, the longer you play, eventually you get an attachment to see uh, to kind of give it heat vision. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. And, and then then it doesn't <laughs> matter that it's blurry, right? Because uh, here I'm going to bring this up right here. That's like one of those things like I didn't really notice either. I mean, it's not as like yeah, it's not as sharp. I was yeah. more to me, it's more noticeable that it like suction cups to your eye. Right, getting it getting it away from you is like you got to make a pretty drastic movement. Yeah. To, like, get out of here! I'm done using you. Yeah, yeah. but dude, but um, but, but mm. at a certain point they give this to you or you get it or whatever, and like it's important for defeating a certain type of enemy, like this yeah. regenerating enemy. So if you're just like blasting his head off, blasting his leg off, then like he's just going to keep regenerating, coming back to life, and keep coming at you. But with this heat vision, and I forget bio, whatever the hell it's called, um, you see. The like where the parasite is within his body that you need to kill, uh, yep. and and I and it added like this whole other element to, like to the first person shooting aspect of this game. It was it was crazy, mm -hmm. and um and, and it and it and that stuff became really fun. And so then I started using my sniper like because it's an important weapon for those reasons. Like they almost make you start using it. Not even not almost almost make you start using it. They make you start using it. And then I started being like really acclimating to it and getting used to it and saying, This is this is this is something that's really important for me to have. And so then I added a third, you know, a third weapon to my to my arsenal. Um, you know, I, I played yeah. played with a lot of things like the uh, the SMG and uh, all these other weapons, but like but but those were the three biothermal sensor. Thank you, uh Dingleberry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I figured we were going to get to that eventually, um, talking about that. But I will say, using my second playthrough, I, I used that scope for the sniper, and it is just it is just so awesome. Like yeah. it just it just feels so good and looks so good to use. And um, yeah, it's it's a super cool cool thing. And yeah, I mean, at this point, you know, I, I was I was not sure if we wanted to go in like chronological order or not, but. I um yeah I'm definitely using like a variety of stuff right now for my second playthrough. Nice, um, nice. Yeah, I'm 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 actually really excited because I I'm you know I promised myself I was going to be you know see more of what this game has to offer my second time through. I'm on professional now and I definitely want to be using the, the submachine gun more. There are weapons that 
you know, came up for offer that I never even purchased. I never even tried. So I'm, I'm going to be doing that a lot more this time. And, and, you know, I'll probably end up with three core weapons that I stick with all over again, but I want to make sure they're three different weapons this time around. Yeah. So you fight yourself through, fight your way through the village. Um, you're eventually, one of your first things, you're eventually trying to head towards a lake. And, um, <clears throat> uh, also, I like those uh, those enemies with those dynamite. <laughs> They're pretty funny. I like how you can shoot the enemies with the dynamite. Oh yeah, uh, trying to throw, and it just blows up in their face. And like, dude, some of the gore in this game is actually really, really well done. You know, this game obviously um, is not what I would consider like super scary for those that are you know very accustomed to really scary games. Yeah. Um, but it definitely nails that creep factor. I mean, this game gives me the heebie-jeebies in the way that you can blow somebody's like head off or whatever, um, or blow them in half. And then like, not only is there like gore and guts hanging out, but then there's like fucking gross ass tentacles like wiggling, <laughs> like like. Uh, and if you look at them, like it looks so good. It's so incredibly detailed. Um, <clears throat> But yeah, you you make your way and uh, as uh, on your way there, um, you know there's there's various different like villages you have to fight off, a couple of little puzzles, secrets to find and stuff. Um, but then you get to basically you have to like open this like you you come to this like church or whatever, and the church is closed off, um, and then you make your way down to the lake first and foremost. And that's where you encounter the first big boss fight, I would say, um, which is like, like the true big, bad resident evil style boss. Uh, and that is the, the lake monster. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Listen, this, I, I was thrilled and disappointed during this boss fight. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Because yeah. first I was like, they warn you all this stuff. They're like, this might make you sick. Be careful. Turn this option off. If it bothers you, blah, 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 the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. did, did, did they even ask if you want to <laughs> skip it? I don't even remember. It was something like, something I don't like, think you could skip it now. So, but, and, and, but this is when, you know, what you can see just from the footage here, Capcom's like, we don't care if you're going to get sick. Like we guess we're gonna warn you about it, but 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 here you go, here you go, boys. This is about as VR hip as like locomotion gets in VR. The boat's twisting <laughs> and turning. You have some control over the boat, whether it goes left or right. You're trying to avoid this thing the as it comes. Boat controls really well too. Boat controls really well. I mean, and and obviously, we'll, we'll, after the boss fight, it controls really well. Like when you're yeah, no longer yeah. tethered to it. But yeah, yeah. But the downside dragged is dragged around by a giant monster. The downside is is that when you're fighting the the lake monster you are holding down the trigger and then holding down uh the grip and then just kind of like releasing one of them it there's no throwing yeah, motion and, it goes, <laughs> you know, right? and so it it, it it was super easy and and like and so the, here we are with this amazing locomotion uh and super immersive boss fight but the actual attacks that you're doing are just like, I'm just going to aim this and release the button at just the right time. It yeah. was like, you know, again, we, we understand that certain uh, compromises had to be made. And so I, but it was just interesting that I loved half of it, but then didn't love the other half. Yeah. This is an example, another one of those examples where like, you know, the immersion factor could have been a little bit better. Um, it, 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 but like you said, it's such a mix because like, it's so fun being pulled around. It looks amazing. The monster, the creature looks amazing. Really, the only thing is just the the little pressing the button and letting it go and it go foop and like yeah, it's just a little bit of an immersion breaker there. Um, I think in the original game you used a spear gun, uh, and so it's like it would have been nice for them just add a spear gun. And yep. it, it's like if you're gonna just have a shoot it anyways because that's what they want you to do, um, just add a had a spear gun and that way you you get to do this part and and you get to have the immersion with it as well but um yeah it's like you said i i both love this part i also was a little disappointed by that but um but it's one of the more exciting moments um that it's a good example of one of the many many exciting moments that this game uh has to offer uh it's moments like these that i think really make this game stand out um, when it's not just running into a room and shooting a, a horde of, you know, enemies coming at you slowly. It's like, no, this is what 
makes the Resident Evil games like really, really fun is when they have these cinematic sequences like this. It's like it's like being in a movie, you know. I, I love the footage uh, that I'm showing right now. It's basically showing uh, I could not figure out how to, to throw <laughs> how, how to throw it properly, and then on top of that, not realizing like how important it was for me to be steering the boat out of the way, and so it doesn't take long for my boat health to get down into the red, like a small little sliver of red. And, um, but yeah, I still managed to beat the boss my first try, despite the fact that like the learning curve um, for me didn't go well. Um, yeah, so he again, got me the first time because I was sitting there trying to throw it the whole time. Right. Um, so, and yeah, but they did, uh, they did polish up the like dodging, like the, the debris, like the logs and stuff sticking out of the, uh, the water. They did actually add a lot more to that. Cause before it was more just kind of, I think you just aim and shoot a little bit. I don't remember there being a ton of actually having to like dodge obstacles as well. So um, it could have been there, but I don't remember that. Um, it was definitely done a lot better here if there, if it was there before. Yeah. This was, this was one of the segments that I was really worried that they would just be like, you know what, we're going to switch it to third person for. Um, yes, I know. I'm like so glad it was at least in first person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There was like, you know, just because I have a, I have a vague memory. I, I played this game obviously 20 years ago when it first came out on GameCube or PS2. Um, and, uh, and I was just trying to remember like all the different things. I was like, Oh, I wonder how, you know, VR, if they're going to make this, and I think they did a pretty good job. Um, so you get through this section and then they, not too long after this, because there's kind of like two things they want you to do in order to get the key for the church. Um, not long after this, you fight a couple of a little bit more villagers and stuff. Um, I don't know if they introduced the the wolves after. Actually, is it the lake? I think the lake. It, this is after this fight. Is I think when the lake opens up. Right. Um, right. Yeah. Before the next boss fight, which this we'll is cool. get to in a minute. Because if you see Dude. if you see the map here, I briefly showed the map before getting back in the boat after the boss fight. And it is suddenly become, it starts feeling like an open world game for yes. like the next hour or two while you're exploring, like you're exploring the lake, you're trying to find all the collectibles, you're trying to find all the money. You, there, are, there are areas that like you don't even need to go to, like little secrets here and there uh, that just like give you like, you know, financial rewards so that, you know, for the, for the next time you have to buy shit. Um, this, this is really interesting because I feel like this just, it just felt so good to have this freedom. And to not be like, okay, you you know, you're kind of like on this somewhat linear path, moving forward, moving right. forward, moving forward. They just stop for a couple hours and say, go ahead, do do what you want, go explore. Makes me, I don't know if I really want this, but I'd be interested in seeing Capcom's <laughs> take. I'd be interested don't in seeing say. Capcom's take on an open world Resident <laughs> Evil game. <laughs> no, it would we, be all, we all knew where that great. was going. <laughs> no, it, it would be great because at the, you know, because uh, open world games are very immersive for VR. So this being, this was like definitely one of the biggest like op most open sections of the game um dude and like wow i mean it is all the things it is beautiful um the caves look jaw-dropping during this section like i just this is one of those stop and you know soak up the roses or stop and smell the roses um and just admire like i was just really admiring the graphics this is like this is top tier I mean, a lot of this game is a lot. This could be said about a lot of this game, but it's very much like, wow, like I am playing a PS5 game in VR right now um, is very much what this looks like. And and yeah, just the con the freedom the of controlling the boat and kind of figuring out this whole section uh, was a lot of a lot of fun. Um, it's it's really good mix of like the pacing uh, the you know, there's a little combat in there. You have to kind of solve a puzzle. Um but then they they throw in like some fun things, like you said, where it took me a minute to figure this out a little bit. But there's like, yeah, there's like barrels like floating in the water. And if you hit them, you get like some current, you get some money. And I'm like, oh, sweet. It's like a, a game within a game. Now, <laughs> yeah. like now I just like I'm totally don't even give a shit about what's going on <laughs> anymore. And I'm just like driving around the lake, just trying to crash into barrels, kind of following the the trail that they they made for you. Right, and the in the controls of the boat just feel so good. The haptics, the 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 uh, the adaptive triggers, like it all just works together to like give you this like good, you know, and like turning turning the boat, like it all just feels so perfect. Which is funny because you know before this game came out, we was like, I wonder what they're gonna, what kind of changes they're gonna make between uh, Village and Resident Evil Four. Are there gonna be improvements? Are there gonna be like what's gonna happen? And the boat in Resident Evil Village was terrible. 
Like, especially by comparison. Oh like, God. Right. It was, it was like when you wanted to turn, it was almost like you picked up the boat and then and you went like this. And you yeah. turned, right? There was no, there were no physics yeah. involved. The boat just no. turned. Yeah. And, that's the one thing I, not, I always forget about that too, but yeah, that's the one thing in the game where it's just like, Ooh. Right. And so with, and um, so with this, it's just, they, they just improved it so much. It felt so natural. And, uh, and just, the waves, the physics, all that stuff they paid close attention to. Yeah. And it feels fantastic. Yep. Uh, so you go through this whole section and the puzzle really pissed me off because it was like right next to where I was. Mm -hmm. Like you get that dial and you have to figure out like which combination of buttons to press. Yeah. And like the, the, the freaking answer is like right there. And like, I literally drove around the entire lake <laughs> killing everybody and everything looking for I actually went to the opposite end and then I found the, the hieroglyphics or whatever for, for the other side, but I didn't see that there was another puzzle thing over there. So like I drove, I drove over there and found the stuff on the puzzle stuff on the wall, the answers dro drove all the way back. And I'm like, I swear this is what it was. And I did that like two or three times before realizing that, Oh, there's two. And like, and I was like, Oh my God, it's literally right next to it. Oh my god, I felt so stupid. Um, yeah. So that was a good like two hours wasted. Um, it's also a good wake up call to be like, man, the puzzles in this game aren't gonna aren't gonna really test you. To be like, it's a good it's a good way for the game to say, hey, uh, you know, if if you if you're stuck on something, like you're trying too hard. <laughs> like, yeah, it's, it's yeah, fine. yeah, yeah. This definitely a very 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 light puzzle solving. Um, although there are a few and the, but that's, that's what I like. I like, a, you know, just a couple of light puzzles and throw in there and, um, it, it doesn't hurt the pacing of the game where it's like, Oh, now I got to stop in my tracks. And then every time you encounter a puzzle, you're not like dreading it. Like you're like, no, like, uh, like it's fine. It keeps, it kind of keeps the flow going, but yeah, it's a, it's a good break. Cause, because again, this game, this game is, uh, there was actually a conversation uh, after the award show about like, is Resident Evil 4 really a first-person shooter? One award for best first-person shooter. And, uh, oh, it and, definitely and is. It is such a first-person shooter. Like, it's just a full-fledged first-person shooter. So many people are getting used yeah. to the idea that, like, Call of Duty, where all you're doing is shooting, yeah. is the definition of a first-person shooter now. And that's not the case. First-person shooters are, there's the, the genre is large, and there are several sub-genres within that. You know, first-person military shooters, first-person adventures with lots of shooting. Like, you're there's a ton of fucking shooting in this game. Like that is 90% of what you're doing throughout the course of this game. So it did feel nice for the other 10% for you to stop and explore, stop and solve some puzzles and just kind of give you a little break from the, pr the pretty much nonstop action. Um, yeah. But it never and got old. Of... No. It never got no. old. And that, I was concerned. I was like, man, there's a lot of fucking enemies in this game. I was like, am I just going to be shooting the whole time? And the answer is yes. And it never got old. And I love that. No, I felt great. And also Bad Robo just pointed out that, and something I didn't even think about, um, that this whole section was just part of the remake. It wasn't even, you know, part of the original game. And he's right that there was no open world exploration kind of uh, awesome. drive around in a boat section. Yeah, that's I mean, awesome because I my memory, as you know, everybody knows my memory is so bad that like I the last thing I want to do is be like, oh, yeah, this wasn't in the original. I mean, dude, I, I couldn't remember the fucking opening sequence in the original. I was like, did no one, no one went to take a piss in the original game, and I, and then I went and watched. And I was like, oh, I think wait. they did. Yeah. yeah, no, they totally did. They totally did. <laughs> However, he came back and got and got back into the jeep. Um, oh, okay. And then and and then you get out for a different reason. Um, they they just they just drop you off in the original one. Like you're not you're not on the hunt for the guy who took the piece. And my my memory's terrible. And um, uh, anyway. So the point, the point is, is this is very, I think reassuring, you know, like the, the Capcom is looking to make, you know, make Resident Evil games more interesting and, and take bigger risks with them. Because again, I, I think this could have been them dipping their toes into the open world aspect. Uh, and that's promising as far as I'm Dude. concerned. Yeah. What if they do start going in that direction? I mean, they, it's open right now, you know, for what they could do next. It could be anything. Oh, with nine. Um, yeah. They, they, cause they finished, you know, seven and eight were different and those are done now. So besides the remake, besides remaking anything, it, you know, the next Resident Evil could be anything. That's very exciting. Of course, it'll probably be like four or five years before we see that next one, but, um, we but that's see. okay because we, we've got this and hopefully some more remakes to, to keep us, 
uh, occupy. But AJ, before um, we before we move on, real quick, just want to give a mm-hmm. shout out to Drat Eb who upgraded to the level two membership. Guys, thank you so much for supporting the channel. Uh, being a member here, supporting on patreon.com slash without parole games, uh, you know, obviously donating during the show. We love you so much. Thank you for keeping the lights on, keeping the channel going. Um, Drat Eb also followed that up with his level two membership chat. It says, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too. Um, and then Nibble the Game Cat wow. with a 50 euros saying thank you for 2023 love you guys we love you too nipple really appreciate thank the generosity you for 2023 did you just call him nipple i mean i didn't but i mean i, I could be down with that, <laughs> was, that a, was that a slip for, uh... did i say nipple I, can you tell me in the chat because god knows i'm not going back and watching this so uh, anyways, <laughs> um anyway so so yeah so this whole section brand new pretty much and was definitely one of the most memorable there's there's many memorable parts in this game as we'll get to but um this was definitely one of the more memorable parts this was you know while the lake monster you know had its ups and downs itself uh that next section was just like amazing that was like truly stunning moment um (laughs) this is yeah just just a heads up there's a lot of people in the chat saying i totally remember the open world boating stuff from the original re4 so (laughs) oh really yeah i mean listen i i don't know the answer that's why i trust you guys so i don't i yeah i don't know um it says open world boat area pretty sure was on there pretty sure brian I pretty don't sure i don't i don't remember an open world boat part in everyone heard boat. nipple okay we got to move on <laughs> <laughs> i i don't remember that but um but anyways anywho um and people tell me stuff that's wrong in the comments all the time so no. I, I, I no. always try to I at least try to I trust bad robo. <laughs> um, cats, cats are never wrong. <laughs> um well they're not game cats, but <laughs> uh uh anyways, so we you go on, I think you go back and when you get back to this section, um you have to is this where you fight some some stuff in the graveyard here? Is there uh, something that comes out and yeah. starts attacking you? Yeah, I um, think so. Hey, those wolf, I know it's somewhere in here, but those wolf creatures, dude, like, yeah, before they were just kind of like, you know, they were kind of like just normal wolves with red eyes, but now they're like these like demonic, like looking, cr- they're, they're so good looking. They look really, really cool. Um, they're sexy. You fight those little bit of wolves and then uh, you do come across a little section here where, speaking of wolves, you find that wolf again uh that's trapped and you have the option to free him um and if you do yes and if you do then it triggers something cool when you fight the next boss fight which is the big giant troll thing and this is where resident evil 4 starts to feel more like a lord of the rings game than it does a a resident evil game now it's very resident evil appropriate but it definitely made me gave me some like i'm like am i in the lord of the rings um but uh but yeah you fight the uh the next boss fight which was again one of those ones where it's just uh this this one was really cool it did seem a little easy when i was doing it but then i'm looking at the footage and i'm like this looks goddamn intense <laughs> like so- and and like i realized how i was narrowly escaping some of these uh this fight with this guy yeah, I've got um. I so there was basically two giants, right? There was there was one giant like in the part that you're discussing now, and then so but the footage I'm showing is actually from much later in the game, uh, where we fight two of them, two yeah. of them. But it's ultimately it's it's a lot of the same stuff here. Uh, here's my question, and, and and again we're jumping around a little bit, um, but that's okay. Mm. When you're fighting two of them, there's a big circle in the middle of the arena where you're fighting. Where if you have time, you can like you know pull this lever in the in in in, in in the circular I totally gate. I forgot to do that. The circular that gate, this? dude. The circular gates opens up, and there's lava underneath. And I was like, "Oh, perfect!" So I just got, I just got to convince these dudes to stand in the middle of the arena, and then pull the lever, and the gate will open up, and they'll fall into the lava. And pff, whoa, what, what, <laughs> what an easy way to kill these bosses. Uh, that didn't seem to work. Every single time I went to pull the lever, they, they, both of the, both of the, uh, the giants went tuk, 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 and backed up. Like they backed up, like they knew what was about to happen. And I was like, these guys oh are fucking, they really are paying attention. And so I have no idea why that's even an option. 
Dude, I just saw you get your head eaten off. Yeah. Oh, Leon's yeah. head eaten off. This took Jesus. me a couple of tries because I kept trying to do the lever thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, they just, um, they both just ran, run away. They, everyone moves away from the thing that opens. And so there's got to be something. There's got to be something that you can attract. Like there's got to be something that you can throw down to attract them, to ki- to keep them distracted so that you can open it up. There's got to be something. I have no idea what this is for. I think you just have to hit them into it or something. I don't know. Well, um. Yeah, I, have no I, don't idea. Recall it, I don't recall it being very easy to get them into that in the original either. But I totally forgot to use that when I fought them. Um, see, that's what makes this game so great and replayable. So maybe maybe, <laughs> that's, like maybe that's the option then. So you know, when the, when you when you drop them, so that so you know where you normally run up and climb up on top of them and, and melee them. Maybe if you drop them in the middle of the arena. Instead of running up and melee them, you you can boom. You have oh, a second to do if it. You then drop them there. Yeah, that's probably where you got to do it. Yep. Uh, Bar- Barkos um, off in the chat saying exactly that. Cool. Yeah, you drop you drop them. I'm gonna do, yeah, I'm gonna so, do that in my next playthrough. I can now. I'll, I'll be I'll be thinking a little bit more calmly the next time this comes up. Yeah. So the first time you just fight one of these and it's like a huge surprise. It busts through a wall and if you happen to save that wolf, then you get this uh, interesting little animation where it cues the wolf and, and he comes and fights for you. And again, I just love that because, you know, for those who don't know, red 13 is my favorite gaming character of all time. I've always loved like a wolf or animal companion like that. Um, I've always thought that was badass. So definitely one of my favorite sequences. Um, but I'll tell you something else that's really cool about that fight. Um, again, talking about the attention to detail, talking about some of the, the interactive elements to it you're you're basically just beating trying to beat the shit out of the giant troll or whatever and weaken them enough to the point to where you know this thing it exposes like this little like leech thing out of its back or whatever the the, the las plagas um virus or whatever uh in the bug form uh and then this is like one of the parts that i really really enjoy about this fight is like you get close and you um you jump on his back and then you just take out your knife and you're just like, and you just slashing like crazy uh, on his back. Did you use that to kill these guys or at all? Did you try that at all? What, 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 what was I using on their back? When, when you weaken these, these right. big troll guys, um, this, the, the, they have like this leech thing right. that comes, I don't know what the thing's called, but it's like this like yellowish gross looking thing that pops out of their back. And if you hit them again right there, they fall down. And when they fall down, if you get close to them and press X, you'll jump on his back. Yeah. Oh, I thought um, you had to do that. Yeah, I think it was. Well, I definitely think it wants you to do that. But okay. I, you don't have to. Uh, you can just continue to just pummel the little thing while it's down and it'll still kill it. But gotcha. but no, the, um, and being that the knife mechanics feel so good in this, the knife uh, feels amazing in this game. Uh, that's a really, really cool part of, of that boss fight. Um but what'd you what'd you think of that boss fight? There's one more thing I want to add on it, but yeah. uh, but but I want to see what you thought no, of that was, boss fight. It was great, man. It was great. I mean, obviously, the sense of scale in VR is is where it's at. You know, this is as far as something on the flat screen, you'd be like, yeah, this looks cool. This is fun. This is all right. But to be able to actually like you know be down on ground level in first person and see these guys like hulking over you, it's like it's very fucking cool. Um, Definitely and, intimidating as hell. And even better, I think uh, when when people started RE4 remake. And you just see the skeleton of this dead dog or this dead wolf. You're like, shit. Like that was like a, a cool part in, in the original where you're like, oh, oh, he's stuck in the bear trap. Let me save him. But then you don't get to save him until like way later in the game. And um, and so, but people thought because you see the skeleton of the dead dog, there's like, oh, this you don't that doesn't happen in this version. So I'm really glad it did still in a different way. Yeah, yeah. And it's one of those like again, it's one of those random like over the top things. But you know, this game isn't about realism. It's about fun. Um, but there's one more cool thing um, is that like there's structures, there's like these little house housing structures, little workshop size structures, like sheds or whatever laying ar- 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 uh, around the arena where you're fighting them. Um, if you go inside of one of those, uh, this is something I thought was really, really cool was that I was like inside and I'm like, am I, am I safe here for a minute? You know, getting the ammo and stuff, looting it. And, and he was like right blocking off the door or whatever. And I'm like, oh crap, um, maybe I can just shoot him from here. Suddenly the walls start to break and he picks up the entire roof of the little shed that I was in. 
Dude, that was such a cool moment. That, that was is unexpected. cool. Because I, yeah. out, I was outside when he did that. Uh, and so I didn't even know that you could be inside and experience that from that perspective. Yeah, like I ran in there because I was out of ammo. I ran out of ammo and I was like, oh, shit, shit, shit. And I'm and I'm running and I'm running. And then, yeah, like I'm in there and then suddenly just the roof of it or the <laughs> whole thing just. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry. You got... Yeah. Uh, uh, the, the whole thing just starts coming up or whatever. And, it, and it's like all the little boards and everything, the details, the splinters of it and everything. And, and then, yeah, he tries to like throw it at you afterward. And it, again, just one of the benefits of having such a high quality production value game like this, um, where, where just the amount of detail and the, the cinematic moments like that are just like endless. It seems yep. um, super, uh, just another really cool moment. Yep. Uh, since Which on... brings us, Brian. Oh, please. Oh, no, 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 please, by all means. Which brings us to after you defeat him, you get the medallion and you get into the church and then you finally meet Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> You're the baby eagle or whatever they call her. Oh, yeah, for real. <laughs> baby pelican. Um, this, is a, this is where the game completely, it, it changes quite a bit uh moving on from from here out but i feel like this is also where the pacing just continues um i feel like after the lake monster like maybe after the lake section the open section is where the pacing just starts to really ramp up and and it's like the game just starts to become harder and harder to put down yeah no i agree uh and uh i mean you know ashley ashley is a little bit of a catch-22 for me like i really uh, enjoyed the concept, you know, after saying, you know, that I fucking president's daughter, nonsense, bullshit, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> right. Um, there, there is, there is this like added element, uh, of having to protect her. And, you know, anytime that you find like a locker for her to like hide in, you like get, get in there. Like just, you just hide yeah. for a little bit while I try to take down this other thing. It's, it, it's, you know, cause you're doing more than just trying to protect yourself. You're trying to protect her. And so that adds more to the intensity. Uh, what I'm showing now is something that I complained about. You know, I tried not to spoil it uh, on Gamescast, uh, but there's this whole area where you've got Ashley in tow, and there's no you can't just shove her in a locker. Like she, you were, she is following you the whole time, and there are catapults with like fire <laughs> that are being <laughs> shot at you, and it is like it's super trying. Uh, and I'm sure some people got luckier than I did, or maybe some people like you know realized that there was more of a strategy than I picked up on, but. Man, this is when, like, certainly, like, when I was like, man, I, I don't love that this is an escort mission at this point because you have two options with her. You can tell her to stay close or tell her it's cool, you know, like, fall back a little bit, everything's fine. And no matter how, and the, I told her to stay close and she just was never close enough for us to get through, like, these really timed segments where there's, like, a bridge with like, these catapults just, like, coming down over and over and over again. You only have a couple seconds to get through. Uh, you know, and I've run through at the right time and I'd look back and she'd get hit by the catapult. And then you she's there in the middle of the bridge. I got to go down and like grab her and like, no, she got hit again. Oh, she got hit again. Oh, she got hit again. Look, looking at your footage, you definitely should have told her to stand back <laughs> because you're like <laughs> running into the, the heart of the action where all the catapults are being fired and you told her to follow you. <laughs> well, I wanted to be right next to me, right? Like stay oh, right yeah. next to me. And no, so, no, it's, that's it's, a terrible idea. <laughs> looking, at <this> footage, <laughs> looking at this footage, that was a terrible decision. <laughs> wow. So that's, yeah, that's no, it, it was she's getting pummeled with it was a catapult. terrible decision. And but like so if you tell her to kind of hold back, like is she still following you just like from a distance? Because like I, I, I just kind of wanted to she like stays way way back from what I remember. I get I guess I, I just wanted a a point where to be like, hey, listen, like I got some shit to deal with up ahead. You stay right here and put a marker on the floor and like you just stand here. I, I'll come back and get you in a minute, you know. So then, let me run across the bridge. Let me uh, take down these catapults with the uh, with the whatever the big fucking mechanism was. I can't. Even, was it my? Did I have a catapult? What 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 did you, you use? You do you do you do use a you you kind of like slowly overtake that area. And the castle looks beautiful, by the way. But um, you slowly overtake that area, and then you gain hold uh, of one of the catapults. Um, you kind of have to like go level to level and and raise it up and then get to the top of it, right. man it while you're kind of fighting off some people. And then, yeah, you have to you basically can use it to destroy the other catapults. 
and then you're you're but you're mainly trying to use it to uh blow up the the main gate the main door gotcha um yeah and yeah <laughs> listen 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 i in my head i was like this is obviously the strategy keep her right next to you as we make it through nope it, i mean the, the, i obviously. totally understand your i totally understand your frustration now yeah but i can tell you like i did not oh <laughs> like every time i look it's literally just ashley being hit with fucking fireballs the entire time yeah. no 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 you only keep her close when you're like trying to run through like run like when you're running basically right, is like right. when you want her to stay close not if you're <laughs> Do- dodging <laughs> obstacles and shit Do- yeah no yeah. no no because like i don't think she got hit once when i was uh when i played this um <laughs> she might have gotten hit once i think i actually got hit once and died um but that was it um, let's just she- say i will not be rehired <laughs> Uh, for, for her protection you're basically using her as like a human shield like <laughs> she, oh man yeah, she's just a I, decoy I, shoot at her instead of me oh my god that's hilarious but but yeah so so definitely want to keep her uh have her stand back a little bit and i knew so and i knew something was wrong right i knew something was wrong <laughs> because i was like if anyone play tested this this is just not how this should go down and uh and so yeah no i'm glad we i'm glad, actually glad we had this conversation and uh, i get to expose my horrible gameplay to the world uh no that's fine it, it's it looks hilarious because like i just <laughs> No, it's great gameplay. This you can't you can't show this game being played and it be bad gameplay. It all looks amazing, but yeah, um, real quick, I do find it. Kevin Kajowski in the chat says you don't need to use a cannon to destroy the catapult. Each catapult has an explosive barrel next to it, which can be shot from a specific angle. This is what I love about yeah, this can, game. Yeah, you can you can yeah you can do that as well, which I I did use that too, but. I'm sure that um, helped then. I this is like again, this is this is all stuff where it's like it sounds to me it sounds it's that convenient red barrel, you know, like how, right. like I was just like, oh, there's just there just happens to be a red explosive barrel standing right next to it. It's like, yeah, it's like one of those deals. Yeah. This is this is this is stuff that actually is gonna add to my enjoyment playing through it to be like to keep all this stuff in mind, playing through again on professional mode, um and and, and saying how can I tackle this situation differently? Uh, how can I have a completely different experience than I did the first time around? So I love this conversation so much. Yeah, but this this whole section was fun. <laughs> oh my god. Can goodness. we move on to the next part so I can change the <laughs> gameplay? I just I love it, dude. That's the funniest <laughs> shit ever. Just just watching her getting blown up over and over like that's glorious. Anyways. Amazing. Um I love it. Uh, let's see. It is it is hilarious to watch. I will say that. Um, okay, so you get through, yeah, some of the castle sections. Um, there's, you know, you're going through here. I guess at some point, um, I don't know when it is that you kind of discover. I don't know, like when when there's more story stuff. But I think one of the next sections is this was a definitely, and this might be a little bit out of order, but I think this is right. There's a big section where um, you have to you meet Lewis, uh, Lewis Sarah, mm-hmm. um, who's just like this cocky, uh, cocky dude that's kind of got like a you know he's got way more personality than Leon. <laughs> um, he's probably I think the best side character in this game, the best like you know uh, supporting character. Well, consi- considering our options. Yeah, there's not many options. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with I agree, and I still didn't like him very much. <laughs> oh man, you don't like anything. I don't. Uh, I hate everything. <laughs> like these. No, but, uh, yeah, go ahead. There was a really fun section. This might have been before the castle too. I'm not so sure, but um, but there's like a this was a part that I remembered very well because this was a part that was extremely difficult in the original version for me. Um, and they kind of put you in this cabin sized like two story cabin um sized building and you get oh, overrun man. with the with the with the villagers the lost plagas villagers and you all of a sudden this is kind of like uh yeah you have to basically survive for like a certain amount of time i think it is you know what you had, you had sent me this through text and said you know these are a list of things that i love to talk about and i was like cool let me go find footage of all of those things and yeah. um and in that one section, I was like, "What? What survive thing is he talking about?" And now that I re- now that you're clarifying and saying, "Oh," I was like, "Fuck, man! I really wish I had footage of that." I'm, I'm actually trying I to look sh- it up right now. 
I should have talked about it being um, in thing. Well, I guess um, while you're getting that, we could talk about something I think is right after that, which is the other boss fight in the barn. Do you have that one? Yeah, I can definitely bring that up. Um, we'll get back to that that section in a minute because that's a very, very, to me, a huge important section um, for sure. Ooh, the Chainsaw Twins. Nice. Um, uh, but uh but yeah so so we'll get to that in just a second right now i guess we'll we'll talk about the uh the barn fight this is like one of the first big enemies that you find um visually this was a pretty cool fight uh visually with the the barn on fire everything it was really intense there's two levels um uh kind of two parts to it where you have to climb up and kind of this reminds me a lot of the fight with jack in resident evil 7 um when you're in like a oh, yeah. like a um like a boathouse or something yep that's exactly what it was uh, yeah and this this reminds me like structurally a lot like that um and again classic resident evil style battle i feel like like i feel like this is just like a a classic resident resident evil experience right here um but yeah what did you think of this fight uh, i thought it was good now listen i don't I, I, <laughs> I, I feel like every time we bring up something that's cool, uh, I also I also say, but here's why I didn't like it. Uh, yeah, but, which is fine. But here's why I didn't like it, AJ. <laughs> uh, because, <laughs> be, dude, because village boss fights were so fucking good. Yeah. Vill- village boss fights shit all over. And so here we are with like possibly the second best boss fights in VR in, on, in Resident Evil 4. But the, but the difference between RE4 boss fights and RE village boss fights is major, major. Like I think some, I, I think... The, the boss fights in, in village are so epic and there's like even that one that's optional like you might not some people didn't even discover it their first time through the game they just all feel so well done that these are like every single time i had a boss fight i was like yeah this is cool this is cool but nothing blew me away um so super got I me mean, you know me man i love boss fights i feel like they add like they they punctuate every chapter they just give you the sense of accomplishment uh they give you a nice uh diversion from doing the same thing fighting the same uh, type of enemies for so long and so that's exactly what this did uh however i was just like yeah it's okay like this is certainly isn't one of my uh favorite boss fights in recent memory yeah yeah i mean i remember this i don't know i remember in the original it was there was something about it that was and i don't know if that has something to do with it um, but again, this is one of those fights where it's like, you look at the footage and you're like looking at what's going on and what you're doing and how everything looks. And it's like, man, like this looks amazing. And, um, this is pretty cool. But I think, I think the difference is this game, you can get by with a little less strategy. I think a lot of the other Resident Evil games, um, they require, they force you to kind of figure out how to beat the bosses. Um, and I think that's a, that's a big difference between Resident Evil four and the other Resident Evils is like, you know, Resident Evil 4 takes a lot of the survival elements out of it, um, where you have to kind of figure out a strategy. You can get by in a lot of these bosses by just kind of just laying into them with bullets and stuff. But there is like an option um, where to, that makes it a little bit more fun if you kind of do devise a strategy with them. Um, that's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, yeah, this wasn't as memorable as... Uh, as it was before, um, but it was still a pretty decent uh, boss fight. And, and like you said, I, I think boss fights are super important in in a lot of video games um, and and make for some epic moments. But but the whole like barn and everything looked looked insanely good. Um, visually, I was very pleased with this, and and I do like having to weaken him and then get close and stab him, which is a pretty reoccurring theme in this game is we can <laughs> get close stab in the eye or the the tentacle or whatever the hell they have yep yep um i'm exporting some footage right now it's going to be about three minutes before this is ready okay cool um but outside of the section two like things start to i think this is actually uh, is it after the castle i can't remember if this is after or before the castle it's got to be before the castle this has to be the whole stuff that takes place before the castle. I, would I think. believe you're right. Yep, absolutely. Um, Dude, what's 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 the dude's name? The, the the Baron or whatever of the castle, the little guy. Oh, Salazar. <laughs> Salazar. Uh, yeah. What I mean that is what a what a goofy character. I could I couldn't take him seriously. 
Um, what, what do we know? Do we know what his deal is? Like what his backstory is? Because this is just again for for somebody who didn't care that much about the the, the lore, or the story here. Um, I, I I don't know if I was just tuning out during specific moments, or if like it was explained, or or if it wasn't explained. Like what was his deal? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I think there's. I think I can pull up something here that would maybe yeah, this these uh um. The, the the fan like the fan wikis and stuff are great. Um, here yeah, Ramon Salazar. Um, yeah, he see. is. Let's see, secondary antagonist in RE four. Um, come on, stop that. Um, it's yeah, he's Lord Ramon Salazar. It's his. Um, I mean, he's just the one that ends up capturing Ashley after you save her. And it's his castle. He's kind of like the, uh, I guess, his castle or whatever. Um, and during this time, you do find out that, um, you know, this guy that you fight in the barn, he actually poisons Leon with the Las Plagas uh, disease. And then uh, you also find out Ashley uh, is... is um, is poisoned with the Lost Plagas. And that's basically the plot of the villain uh, in this, is the, the Osman Saddler guy, is that he wants to basically... That's why he captured Ashley in the first place, is they want to infect her and then send her back to the president, get him infected, and then basically have, like, world domination. Um, and that's, that's, that's like, the, the entire premise, like, summed up in a nutshell um the bad guy plot i should say but uh let's see here but yeah i think i think salazar is just the 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 castle part section boss whatever um i will say i like this version of salazar a lot more than the original the original he was so fucking annoying and was like just like i don't know he was he was he was very i don't know like it had its charm to it, but he was very like non. He like wasn't very imposing at all. Um, or and, and he's not really here, but he's a little bit better. Yeah. <clears throat> um, gonna sidetrack this just for a second here. Uh, Living legend in the chat says, "Should I play village after this? Visually, it will seem like a bit of a downgrade with more aliasing." But I want to know your thoughts, I, dude. Honestly. I, I think I don't think it's going to be a downgrade. I think I think both of these games have like their own unique style. Um, and and honestly, I think if it, if it came down to it, I would always prefer the aliasing, right? Because there's a smoothness to this game, uh, but but it also kind of like affects the way the the whole game looks. And so it comes off as like a style uh, more than like fidelity. There's a different style, and I think the style of Village works better for VR. But I this game so does hands down looks better though, like technically. Um, that's a dude. That's a tough call. I, I you say hands like the down set pieces, like the set pieces, the graphics, everything. I See, think it looks better. I think I disagree because because uh, th there was I think there were more set areas in village. Like you go from you, you know you go from uh, caves to uh, the you know the, looking over the village and you're in the village and then you're in the castle and like did all these different segments have like just these very distinct looking areas for so much of Resident Evil 4. And, and I don't think this is a negative. Again, it's just different. It just felt like I was like, okay, now I'm in this area. Now I'm in this area. And yet and, and but in a lot of it was dark and grin and, and grungy and like a lot of its caves a lot of it's, uh, you know, like just being outside and, uh, you know, it's dark and that I don't, I don't think the set pieces in RE4 look nearly as distinct as all the different areas in village. I mean, think about, think about the, you know, the last areas of village and how radically different those are compared to, you know, and, and, and there's some of that here too, but, but it doesn't, it's not as distinct as village. I think, I, I think you're in for a treat living legend. When you play Village, I think you're going to see what I mean. Um, yeah, you got to play both, and and yeah. Village again has that advantage of like immersion factor, the way it's designed. Um, but I still disagree. Right? I think this game looks slightly better, okay. um, just overall. Um, but I, I I agree with you know a lot of the points you're saying. Like there is something about the art style that's slightly different. It's a little bit more realistic looking almost in in Village and. Um, 
it's brighter. Something it's brighter about overall. It. Like, if just overall, there's a there's a brightness to the game that, like, you are. This game yeah. is like just like entrenched in darkness. Like from the beginning to the end, you know, there's very few areas where it's just like really well lit. And villages, you know, like most of the time you're in the the village, it's like pretty bright out. <laughs> it's like it's it's a diff, it's a different vibe completely. It's definitely yeah. It's definitely more of a winter vibe. This is more of like a fall vibe. <laughs> 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 well, <clears throat> now it's time. I, I I got that footage rented out, so hopefully I got what we're looking for here. This is this is uh, yeah. You basically you're board, you can board up windows. You can pull uh, bookshelves uh, in in front of uh, in front of windows. It's just it, it definitely a almost like a mini survival mode going on here in the section that you were talking about. Um, just get, grabbing boards and, and boarding things up. It, it's 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 crazy that they just like went. It, it it feel that this feels like a mini game of some of some sorts. It feels like um like in Resident Evil Seven you had the the down the DLC, and one of them was the uh, the the survival mode that you have to beat Jack and all the enemies. You're in the basement the whole time and you're running those machines the whole time. This feels like th- they could have they could have made a full fledged mini game just out of this section. Yeah, this is definitely, I mean, like I said, this is one of the most memorable parts for me because it's one of the um, most challenging and it's also one of the most survival moments of this game because the whole game is very like fast paced action adventure, um, cinematic and stuff. Uh, This is very much like a, okay, let's throw in a little bit of challenge and survival where you have to just kind of like stay alive here for a while. Um, I like how you're just spamming the knife into people's faces. Um, which, by the way, we didn't. Uh, yeah, yeah, we didn't mention it a bunch. But listen, the knife look, is. We oh. we absolutely uh, listen. I, I I actually love like going back and looking at this footage because yeah. by the end of the game, seventeen and a half hours after what you're seeing now, like. Mm-hmm. I, I felt like I really had great control over the knife and using that to parry and using that, um, you know, to at all times and making sure that, you know, that that, that was that, that was always ready to go with a follow up knife attack, you know, whenever possible to conserve ammo. That wasn't how I started this game at all. Like I was just swinging the blade wildly and the shooting and like I, it was I, I felt like I was out of control. Uh, but but the more you play, the more the better you get at it. The more you learn, like how how to use all of your weapons appropriately, uh, properly, and uh, and and so man, like when that all finally clicked, it felt really really good. Um, and I, and I don't think I was quite there yet during, during this segment of the game, which is way too far into the game, AJ, to not really have a good understanding of all your weapons. <laughs> well, again, one of the things that just makes the game so replayable, and and yeah, it's it is important to get good with the knife and kind of understand it. Um, I mean, you don't really get a lot of chances to use the knife a bunch at first because it keeps breaking. Like it oh, right. until you get it upgraded, or until you get the a different knife and get that upgraded. Like your knife is very limited, so. Mm. Um, but I do. I just got to give a shout out to yeah. The the pairing feels really good when you put it on professional difficulty. You have you actually excuse me. You have to actually have like perfect parries. So the timing and and the connection with that actually has to be like on point. Um, if you just hold your arm out or something or or try to just swing, you know, randomly, like you're gonna get hit. Um, it won't parry. But I do even like, you know, we, we we have mentioned like the third person stuff, but I do love that they keep the knife in first person when you um, when you go down and you, you know, some of these Las Plagas people, they have like a second form where their head turns into a giant fucking centipede. Um, and that's one of the things that makes this game such a great shooter is like, OK, now you have to aim for their little eyeballs and shit like the weak spots. Right. right. Like that's. To me, that's where I'm like, I 100% agree with this being classified as such a great first person shooter because that's where it's like, okay, you're not just aiming and just shooting and not even just trying to get headshots, but you're like trying to hit the eyes and the weak spots. That to me is a sign of great shooting mechanics um, like that. And then you combine it with the knife, just like how I'm seeing here um, when they're on the ground. And you just quickly do this. And then it just cuts to a little first person animation where you. You know, I'm totally fine with uh, with the little you know canned animation every time you do the uh, like do a stop them from basically just the the fatal blow with the knife or whatever. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, something I'm realizing while like dude, there's so there's so much to this game. 
Um, yeah. and I'm, and I'm, and I, so many things kind of came up while, while, uh, while I was listening to you. Uh, one of, one of them is absolutely like, you know, when I did, I only, I only live streamed the first hour, hour and a half of this game. Mm-hmm. And, and there were things that like, I kind of wish I knew during that live stream, like when there are tough enemies to take down, it's like, well, you know what? Like maybe, maybe shoot him in the knee or in the leg and he'll, you know, and he'll, oh, and, yeah. he'll and he'll fall down on that knee. And, and then, you know, you run up and then you get to melee attack him or you have a second to like, really like lay into him. Uh, it, it's that kind of stuff where there's definitely a lot of strategy involved. Um, and, and while I was watching this, I completely forgot about the yellow herb situation. Like, oh, I don't, yeah. re- I don't remember this in many or maybe any other Resident Evil game where like you actually have like this weird progression system when it comes to your like overall a- health. You're, if you increase in health. Yeah. With every time you use a yellow herb. So obviously, you know, the, 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 the typical thing in Resident Evil games is, is, you know, you got your green herbs, which do minimal, uh, health regeneration uh, or improve mm-hmm. your health, uh, raise your HP. I'm sorry. What, what's, what's, what's where I'm looking for? I'm not trying to say raise your overall health. HP, just restores, oh. restores a little bit of your health. You combine oh, that yeah. with the red herb and then suddenly you've got this like much stronger thing, but now you can mm-hmm. combine them. Uh, it used to be. It used to be a big thing with blue herbs, which which would cure poison, and they they ditched that completely here. And they, they you get yellow herbs that up your overall HP. Your maximum HP is now higher, and you can do yeah. that throughout the course of the game. Uh, and so every time I found a yellow herb, it was like, oh, like how? Yeah, you know. I always saved them too. I always saved them to try and combine them, um, right? And and use those wisely to kind of be able to both heal yourself and get a increase your overall health um but yeah they it feels like they fleshed out like a they actually like made like a bit of a crafting system in this game which is pretty nice um i definitely don't remember much of like a crafting system from before uh like you said it was it used to be like what like you combined like two green herbs and that was it or no no it was like you combine like a green herb and like some chemical powder or something and and that's how you would get like a health pack or something oh yeah um, yeah you could create like a first aid spray with that i think yeah, yeah yeah um but in regards to this section though uh how many times did you die on the section did you die at all or did you make it through uh in this section i i want to say you know here's the thing like I, I i may have died in this section once but i'm but i don't remember um the thing is is i i did so poorly in some of these like high intense situations did you like, I, like, it? like I was no, like I was talking about with the um, with the lake monster. I did horribly, mm. but somehow still squeaked through. And I remember doing horribly in this section, uh, but I think I still squeaked through. I could be wrong about that. I don't want to like I don't. I'm, I'm not trying to lie or be like, oh, I did great. No, I did fucking terrible almost the entire game, but still always uh, squeaked through, dude. Yeah. What was it? What 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 is what's the name of? Is it the what's the name of the chainsaw sisters that like what just uh, things are already bad right things are already <laughs> going downhill and then like these two chainsaw sisters come out and attack you simultaneously like, two chainsaw weapons uh, fucking i just i just i just love how uh over the top this game is the, yeah it made me so happy it's ridiculous yeah but in this hut place um actually this was the reason i wanted to talk about this moment this part in the first place is because in the original game this part was one of the most difficult parts for me. Like it might have been the hardest part of the entire game um, for me uh, originally, um, and I was shocked that I was able to get through it. Now, by the end of it, I was getting beat up quite a bit. Like I got through it just barely, yeah. um, but I still made it through on my first try, and I was like really surprised by that because that originally took me probably like thirty minutes to an hour to get through uh, the first time. Um, Bad Robo says I died in this hut like six times, <laughs> but I played it on hard. And so that's why that's one part that I'm really looking forward to uh, in terms of like looking for a challenge um, is I can't wait to. Uh, the problem, of to course, being through that. The problem, that of course, of being we have mm-hmm. to start a fresh game, right? Have to start a fresh game and not do new game plus on these difficulties to, to really see what it feels like. Because, because you know, we're, we're doing new game plus oh. and going into professional and like, it's like, oh, this is supposed to be so much harder, except we've already, we're bringing all of our upgraded shit into the situation. And it's like, I don't think, I don't think that's really giving us the full feeling of what it's like to play this game on hard or professional. So I think to, to, to start a fresh game, uh, we give us the feeling. Um, shit uh jordan says bella sisters thank you very much that's um yeah that part was that part was pretty cool um 
and again stylistically the way they look is just like ah this is like what i love everything i love about resident evil yeah um yep but yeah this whole section was great and uh <clears throat> then you get through this you survive long enough and then you you move on to the castle which we already talked about um yeah, where are we at? The, What's the next clip I'm bringing up here? I want to make sure. So the castle uh, was was beautiful. We did kind of we talked about like kind of like the beginning of the castle. There is that part which I think you may have shown a little bit of it, but there was definitely the castles where things kind of go. You're you're in the castle for a very long time. Um, again, it goes back to like this super Lord of the Rings vibe where you're running around this castle and then there's like this big giant ogre thing. Uh, like big giant troll thing, and I'm I seriously feel like I'm like uh, it's it's so out of place, but it was it was fine. Um, it's a, it's a really short section, and and it was actually a pretty fun section. Um, in the original game, you have to kind of fight your way moving up this elevator uh, while you're in the castle, and that was again another part that was really difficult in the original game. A little bit easier here. Um, but again, I played on normal my first playthrough, which I, I usually wouldn't have, but with my time constraints and things like that, I wanted to just play it on normal. But I think I would have probably enjoyed it a little bit more on hard. Uh, have like even if I had to play it over and over, I mean that's part of the fun for me. Sometimes, most of the time, um, no. <clears throat> Listen, the ca- the castle was great, and and I think more than anything else, like it this this was one of the things that harken back to village for me where it felt like man i've been outside and it's been dungy dungy grungy i don't know what word i'm dingy and and just Mm. gross and everything's wet and blah blah blah. and it's just like sort of that vibe that i've been experiencing like for hours now like this regardless of where i am like it's just everything's kind of gross and wet and then suddenly like yeah you, you go through over this drawbridge and you open up these doors and you're like shit this looks completely different than anything else I've been I've seen before. Like in this game, like the, the you know the marble walls and, and tiles and everything's reflective and like well lit and so you know so the fact that you know I was gonna say Village had more of these moments, but the fact that it took so long to get to one of these moments in RE4 almost made it more impactful to be like this castle is fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I actually think the like as cool as the castle was in Village. Um, I think it was more so the characters that made that section fun. Yeah. Um, Lady Dimitrescu and, and her daughters and some of the stuff in there. Uh, but visually, the castle in this one blows away village visually. Um, both like... I, I like think that you keep pay- saying this, and in my head I go, eh. Yeah. Yeah. No, you don't agree. Yeah, no, I, 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 think, they, they're I think they're both beautiful games. Way. They're both beautiful yeah. games, and they, I think they both do things that are exceptional. But but I, but that's why I don't think one blows the other one away is because they both are doing very cool things. They're just kind of you know they're both doing different things that are very cool. Yeah, I just felt like the castle was the only part where like the aliasing and stuff like really got to me a little bit, like where it was more noticeable. Um, in in village, um. This game, like I said, it, yeah, it's it looks a little bit different, but it was super sharp and clear. But as you have on the uh, the screen here, yes, um, this was another really really interesting section uh, where you actually got to play as Ashley. What did you think about this part? Well, I'm not usually a fan of being like being like, okay, I've been spending my the entire game building up a character, and you You're know, like, thank God I don't have to escort her anymore. I can <laughs> well, <control this> bitch. <laughs> she's finally doing what I want. <laughs> she's do, she's moving exactly how I want. Um, yeah, no, it's uh, it, <laughs> controlling Ashley. This is it's it's cool because. Because again, you know, for, for for a short for a first person shooter that's like nonstop action for most of the game, uh, it was it was cool to kind of hit the brakes a little bit and say, this is this is going to be different. Uh, you know, you you find this lantern, uh, this, this lantern with blue light that that actually freezes the enemies in their tracks, and so that was very cool, right? Like here you are, you're you're super you're defenseless. Why why hasn't Leon given her a gun? Right? Why why? <laughs> <laughs> like I don't think that'd be a good idea. <laughs> I mean, I don't think it'd be a great idea, but it's better than than a lantern. <laughs> Listen, if Leon accidentally shoots her like three or four times, 
in the game, then she would definitely shoot his ass. <laughs> no, this this was a really yeah, this was really strange the way they did this. Um, I I enjoyed this section a lot. Me too. It was um, it was a nice break from the action, and it was it was yeah. very cool to explore and and feel like you know we're just doing some puzzle solving and figuring out exactly how shit has to be done. Mm. Uh, and, and the fact that you're basically setting up this area for Leon to explore later. Um, I thought that was a really cool way to do this. Yeah, and man, this is a good showcase for just how the lighting of the game, like the like how dark it can get. And I mean, it is dark. And like the the OLED, this is where you know one of the biggest advantages, if not the biggest, having the OLED HDR um, panel uh, screens because man, like it is so dark and it is pitch black. Um, wherever uh wherever you're not shining the light um bit of an interesting mechanic that i think took away a little bit of the tension a little bit because you can just basically shine the lantern on those those there's like these knights that come alive and become infected which is really cool they look awesome and everything but but like literally you just shine the light on them and and they just freeze so yeah. um it was it, i will say though like adds being unarmed uh and adds to the tension uh and I wouldn't say it's scary per se, but you have these knights that are like sort of patrolling their areas, right? And you sort of go into this stealth mode, especially before you have the lantern. Uh, mm. And and so it's sort of for the first time in the game, like I wasn't scared. This is this is a major difference between Seven Village and this game. Seven was crazy scary. Village was like eh, had scary moments, you know, yeah. cer certainly some scary moments. But this was just like for the most part, this was just all action all the time. You're armed to the gills. Let's fucking fight these things. You're good to go. Um, and then suddenly you're unarmed, and you're you're exploring sections of the castle you hadn't seen yet. And so there is like a, this level of fear that the rest of the game wasn't able to uh, implement that this section did. I, I yeah, you're that. not entirely defenseless, but you're pretty. You you have no weapons to permanently kill these things. You can only basically slow them down. Um, but yeah, pretty cool section. I think it was an, again. I I love the the lighting here, and um, and it's kind of cool how you're trying to help Leon. And there's a little bit of a puzzle here you have to figure out. Nothing too difficult. Once again, right. Um, but yeah, nice nice little section for sure. And and like you said, I think the most importantly, a good change up like a like a good change of pace um that didn't really hurt the pacing at all hey just like the um just like the yellow herb conversation uh, i want to bring up something mm -hmm. bit jello boy 30 the jiggly gamer cat i uh, said if uh, a few minutes ago back said have we have we talked about how the socket how we socket gems and treasures now i really love this encourages us to us to find specific gems it was cool man i, I really i, I got to agree it just adds you know th there's something almost silly about finding treasure that it, or finding co like items, like just specific items where it's like, oh, here's a compass. And I was like, oh, what can I use the compass for? And in parentheses it says, this is just for selling. And yeah. Like, oh, okay. And it's like, oh, I'm here, so here, glad here, it said that. <laughs> here's a bar of gold. What do I use this for? Oh, it's just for selling. Said, well, here's this chalice. It's just for selling. And it's like, and I'm, I'm, really, I'm really happy that that's there. Yeah, because exactly. I'd be hold, I'm, I'm a hoarder in video games. I will keep everything. In yeah. fact, I didn't sell <laughs> anything that wasn't treasure. Like if it was a key, I kept keys through the entire game. Like oh, I didn't yeah, sell any of that shit. Um, and so, but I'm like, but why? Like, you don't need any of these things after you. Well, get some to of them you do. Some of them you can go back and use. Oh yeah, that's right. There's a couple, but like, but most of them no. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, and so, but yeah, so there's you know, so so it seems like it's adding a little bit of depth. Uh, this, this whole socketing uh, gems into like chalices or or or, or, or the the you know the golden cat or whatever the hell it is that you find um it i always had a sir i always had a ton of those gems though did you too or like because i i mean i i feel like i i searched out every corner of every map and made sure that like i shot down any of the hanging lanterns that dropped gems and that kind of stuff and so anytime i had something to sell i'd be standing there in front of the shopkeeper and uh, I'd be like, hold on, I'll be right back. And I like go into my inventory, grab the thing, gra which is cool. I like the way they did it in VR, right? You like ba basically hold the item in one hand, you grab the the gems and then kind of like just stick I them in. That. I love good. that. It feels good. The little things like that, you know, that's why we love VR is, is stuff like that. And, you know, where this game lacks some immersive, you know, elements, it makes up for it as well with, with some other really cool immersive things. And that's definitely one of them. And yes, I... Definitely, like, if I had, like, two gems, 
like I would like hold them forever until I found that third one, which you eventually would if you're looking for these things. Right. Um, you would definitely the way they've they have it laid out is like yeah, if you explore each area, you will find the the proper gems needed to apply. Um, yeah, and I, I hoarded them quite a bit because I you know minus a couple parts where like if I was desperate for some money, um, you know, I'd, or if I didn't have anything that was matching, but. But I like, it's just, again, the, the depth that this little mechanic adds where it's yeah. like not only are there collectibles, but it's like how they're used as well. Um, and it just adds so much depth to the gameplay, just additional yeah. depth. I never sold any awesome. gems on their own. I never sold any gems on their own because I was like, well, the, 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 these gems are making these bigger items far more valuable. So there's no reason to sell them on their own. Let's just, yeah. Yeah. Um, so which, just, which just also means, them. also means I ended up with way too many gems at the end of the game, still in my inventory, <laughs> yeah. but uh, those, those carry over too. So uh, I'll be using them on my yeah. new game plus mode. Yeah. And you're going to need them. Um, oh, oh. cause that shit gets expansive. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Oh, I'm so um, excited to level some shit up. I, I want to, yeah. I'm probably going to play more immediately after games cast. Yeah. I, I also love how many save files you can have in this. So like, if you want to experiment with stuff, like you can, you can like, that's what I would do. I would hoard a bunch of stuff. And then like, if I wanted to experiment with something that I wasn't sure if I was going to end up liking or keeping, um, you could just go back to a previous save uh, that you had, but I'd always save like an additional save slot and then, um, and then just buy a, and combine a bunch of shit, sell a bunch of shit, buy a bunch of new weapons, try them out, see how I like them. And, um, wonderful, wonderful save system. Uh, I used, can, I, I used one save slot <laughs> for, for uh, are you 80, kidding me? 80 percent of the game. Uh, one save oh my slot. Goodness. I don't know I what's like wrong 15. with 15. <laughs> 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 yeah, because it well, and this is where, well, I guess for me, it was kind of like, you know, I want to showcase, I want to show people some stuff or, or if I want to replay a certain section, yeah. you know, this game, one of the things I wish it did have was like a chapter select. Um, there's no like chapter select. So, um, right the only way you can replay a certain section that you really enjoyed is either to start from the beginning and play through it all again, or save a file right there, which is what I did. So, um, right. And, and, and that's what, and that was sort of my mentality. My mentality was, was like, Oh, well, I'm capturing all of this footage as I go. I captured 17 and a half hours of gameplay, um, while I was playing through. And I was like that, this is how, you know, this is, this is how I'm like capturing this stuff. Um, <clears throat> you know, and also knowing full well that I was going to play through again, uh, it didn't matter to me. Um, but yeah, toward the end, I just started using multiple save slots. I was like, why wasn't I doing this the entire time? I'm not trying to rationalize not doing it because I think you should do it. Um, yes, yeah. Dinglebury asked, it, will, will we platinum trophy this game? Dude, nothing made me happier in the, in the, in the PSVR 1 era than having reasons to play and replay and replay and replay Resident Evil 7. And then to finally get the platinum on like my fifth or sixth run or something, that was that was great, and 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 that's what this has over Village for me is so many reasons to replay the game, and I cannot wait to platinum this game. It might I'm not going to do it today or tomorrow or this week or next month. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna fucking enjoy this shit, and I'm gonna be I'm gonna play this again and again over probably the next couple of years, and and then get the platinum naturally. Yeah, this is the the replay value. It definitely this game has some really good staying power lasting power um but all right let's keep things moving brian um uh well then so, let's let, let's let's get to something that everybody talked about the second that they did it the, oh, mi the mine carts okay yeah i mean to yeah which is a huge huge important part of this game yeah, I think, uh, you know, along the way, you you go through, like, the garden section of this, which looked beautiful. That was pretty cool. Um, there's a couple of cool fight sequences, one little escort part where you're making your way through the castle, and it's beautiful, a couple puzzles. Um, but, yeah, eventually you go underground. And then, um, actually, I think before... Well, I... Okay. Um yeah, I know we're, we're not going to hit every single beat of this game. Um, yeah, I don't know if the, the the like prison outside place. I guess that does come last, at least the biggest part of it. But, um, but dude, yeah. So you do make your way underground. You meet back up with Lewis, and uh, you kind of team up with him. And dude, now this is one of the most 
a VRAF things. This was actually this section was not only fun, um, incredibly fun, but it was mind blowing, like how well this was implemented for VR. So here's my question, is, and I'm only asking this just to get it out of the way. Uh, why are we using a different gun uh, for this section? Because like it didn't it didn't want to reload uh, as easily as as you know the handgun I was using, uh, and because uh, it, it's it's what's his name? It's Lewis's gun. It's Lewis's gun. Red nine. Is that what it is? And and I like I couldn't I I, I couldn't get the reloading mechanism to work. Uh, you just flick it. You just, so, so you, after, when you put that when you put that thing in, you just go whoop, like this, and it and it flies off. Oh, I'm trying to like break this thing off, like with yeah, my yeah. other hand, and I'm like we, we all did it. Don't worry. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, <laughs> but you, for, yeah, but, you, but the rest of you guys out. figured it out. <laughs> I never figured it out. <laughs> um, so okay, I didn't realize that that's what was going on. It's it's so weird because you know it's like I'm, I'm supposed to learn to reload this thing like on the fly in the middle of this action sequence. Yeah, I don't know why it's like that because I think even in the flat version, like the animation shows him breaking it yeah and so like it feel but yeah it's like it gets like stuck and you can break it off but no it's like it's so much easier you just yeah. and it, why, but why are we using lewis's gun why well that's a gun that you can buy too i had that gun so i yeah i had no interest in this gun so now you're making me use it i had so many red, better weapons the, to use the red nine is uh it's it's nice it's it's strong as hell anyway i wanted to get that out of the way um, you know, I, I know a lot of people were like, were like, oh, it's like the Russia blood level. Dude, this is the Indiana Jones and, and uh, the Temple of Doom levels, but this is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, yeah, this, I mean, this was a, definitely an example of like everything great about roller coaster. This is like literally like a roller coaster ride. And um, I don't, I don't recall this. Uh, maybe this was in the original game. I don't actually remember if this minecart was in the original game or not. Um, I do remember there were some like, like sky um sky lift things that you would there was like a section where you would go down like a sky lift and that was actually a really cool section and i wish they kept but this there's no denying how amazing this part was because and this is like everything when you talk about taking a flat screen game and making it feel built from the ground up this is like the best example here this was the best executed like cinematic moment out of the entire game because there's a leaning system and you have yes. to actually lean to keep the cart from, from tipping over. Now you want to talk about like immersive gameplay, like, holy shit, this was like some of the most immersive mechanics in all of the game that, that you could experience. Well, which again, you know, not, this is temple of doom. Like the, the leaning stuff was in temple of doom, right? Yeah. It's very much, it definitely felt like Indiana Jones. Right. And so this is, this was so intense. This could, again, this could have been a game on its own. This could have been a, a mini game all on its own. Uh, yeah. I s still think it should be DLC. Um, you know, they can just have like uh, minecart <laughs> rides and uh, you know, all these different obstacles to, to experience. It felt so good. It felt so good to do this. And uh, yeah, yeah. See, I think I think bad Robo, bad Robo said he has infinite ammo. Yeah, that that's yeah, I think that's why. Um, yeah. I think that's why you're using his gun so that you can you can basically use up as much ammo as you want and still have all of your ammo for the next section of the game because there's just so much shooting involved in this. Um, but, uh, yeah. but yeah, dude, this was this felt so good. This made this made me want the next uh, you know the next Switchback game to include uh, some leaning elements, right? To, to add an extra level of gameplay where you got to keep the thing on the track on top of everything else. Yeah, I've, I've got a save, uh, save state right here, and I've replayed this section several times. <laughs> I think what I love about this part, too, is that you, you go through it, and I was like, oh, like, like that, like, man, that was so much fun. And then my favorite part, though, is like, it's like, oh, we're not done yet. And then you get on, you you just basically stop. And then there's a second part to it um, where it just keeps going and you do it all. You do it again. Uh, but it's like faster and more intense and there's more enemies and stuff. And um, I was like so freaking happy about that. I was like, yes, we're still doing this some more. Um, but yeah, amazing, amazing section. This is one that uh, I want to I've got a save file right here. I want to uh, throw Julia in here and let her let her play this part. <laughs> This and the boat, I want to let her play because nice. she, you know, she hasn't she hasn't seen this game at all yet. So is she, she going to be playing through for herself? Um, she wants to. I got her to play the demo of Village, um, uh, but she was asking me if this is like you know how scary it is and stuff, and I was mm -hmm. like, yeah, it's you know, it's it's 
the, amongst the Resident Evils, like it's not like you know one of the scary. It's the one of the least scary Resident Evils, but there's still some degree of like intense and gameplay and a lot of coordination and under duress and pressure and um, stuff. Yeah. So so we'll see. But um, I mean, for sure, for people to... who are susceptible to you know like being scared of, of stuff that's not even horror, right? Like not horror horror. You know, yeah, um, she's pretty good, but but like Resident Evil Seven was too much for her. I do. I think Resident Evil Seven was too much for most people. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely was. I mean, it was, um, it was almost too much for me, and like, and that is, I, I feel like they made that game for me. Still too much. I loved it. Yeah. So so after the um, after the minecart, which was obviously again one of those memorable moments. This game had so many memorable moments in it. Um, you you crash at the bottom or whatever, and then you kind of work your way up from the bottom of the mines. Um, I don't remember if the original game had the mine cart. I don't know if somebody answered that or not. They said um, it was different. It was there, but it was different. It was there, but different. Um, <clears throat> but then you start kind of working your way up, I think, through the mines, and then they start introducing this new enemy, like these bugs. Yeah. Um, who, which... who camouflage into the environment. So, like, and they are totally <laughs> there if you're paying attention. Right. Yeah. It's yeah, like, just but, like right there. But for the most part, you walk. You're not paying that much attention. They really do camouflage pretty well into the environment. So you like walk up to them and they um, make themselves visible, and you're like, ah, shit. Yeah, yeah. And those, uh, I actually liked. I think the bugs and the caves stuff was actually done better here than it was in the original. Um, but then you, uh, I guess, uh, so you run into Krauser, who's basically. Um, the guy that trained Leon, right. um, or and and uh, he be, he comes. He's basically the one that originally kidnapped uh, Ashley, um, and he. I think they've kidnapped her again. I think Salazar has kidnapped her this time, and they're going to infect her and use her to inf- to take over the world, whatever. Um, Krauser ends up killing Lewis, uh, and then thank God. Um, that's dude lewis is so cool man luis he's whatever. um he's whatever all the characters i, I was wishing i was really wishing he, ashley was dead by the halfway point <laughs> <laughs> like you're like that's the mission and i was like in the mission has been as a failure now it's all up to us to get out alive move on <laughs> i don't remember i think i i think krauser's history was he in zero was he in resident evil zero or something oh, because now, now you're really asking some Tough questions. Deep question. Yeah, I don't. I don't because I don't know the whole. I haven't played zero since literally the GameCube. Like that is the first and last time I played zero. Well, because I feel like it just like he just suddenly is here and it's like oh it it it, it's Leon's the guy that trained Leon and I'm like did did I remember him from somewhere like did it did is there is there a story and lore here from another game that that is because it's kind of just like oh this is the guy. That train Leon and um, um, otherwise, but um, let's see. But anyways, you know. Uh, but the whole thing about Krauser is that he's uh, Dark Side Chronicles, AJ. Oh, really? Only from that? But he's, that was ba- it's it's basically was of the the, fa- and- the fandom wiki has um, has two two listings for him: Dark Side Chronicles two thousand nine, which we all know was the Wii light gun shooter that came to. PS3 Loved moves, um, and then the uh, and then the Resident Evil Four. In and it's saying Resident Evil Four 2023. It's not even saying Resident Evil Four. Which, That's which interesting. Doesn't, doesn't make any sense because obviously Krauser was in the. Uh, That's interesting because in Umbrella Chronicles, you basically play through like zero from. Yeah, you're play, you do fight alongside Krauser or whatever. I think, but I don't remember if you're Leon or if you're. Yeah, you must have been Leon. That's really interesting. Um, I just played that recently, actually. I love that. I freaking love that game so much. Yeah. Um, but anyways, there's it, it would have been cool for this game. Like, you know, you say you're not crazy about the story. It would have been cool to kind of like go through some stuff with Krauser in the beginning to kind of set this up later. Yeah. Um, you know, but this isn't like, you know, it's not a movie. It doesn't, it, it's not, you know, it doesn't have, it, it's not really held to the same standards as like movie story writing, uh, storytelling. <laughs> Thank goodness. Um, <laughs> but uh but yeah they have this uh this whole section that's booby trapped this was also in the original game where you're kind of running through these sections but you're you're fighting a lot more enemies in the original one and then like you kind of fight krauser at the end and the whole thing about this is like you use just the knives and any excuse to do, to use the damn knife in this game 
I am all with it. Um, pretty easy fight overall, I thought. But again, yeah, playing a normal definitely definitely felt like a pretty easy fight. Um, I do. I, I so I didn't love the Krauser boss fight. I, I here I, I just sound so fucking negative during this whole show, which is ridiculous because I love the <laughs> entire game. Uh, and again, some of the boss fights were just like, okay, this is a thing. Um, but what I loved about Krauser was that uh, there was so there was such a lead up to fighting him. Right, he, it's like here he is, and you're like trying to get through the, all these segments with that are, that are completely booby trapped, and it's just like you hear his voice and he's taunting you, and like you know he's obviously got a sniper rifle, and so you got to move from like you know cover to cover, and all these things leading up to the boss fight. And I thought that was way more fun than the boss fight itself, and it feels like an extent by you know naturally an extension of the boss fight, like preceding it, kind of like so it makes the whole boss fight feel like it's this much bigger event than than when it finally ends with this one on one thing you know um and so yeah so i really actually enjoyed this whole section of the game even though it wasn't um even, even though the boss fight was just like meh all right here's another boss fight but the best part is when you kill him you get the knife uh oh, you get God. the um uh i don't remember which one's called the combat knife and which one's which but um but the knife that you get from him is very very nice and on your second playthrough and you get that thing upgraded oh it's <laughs> amazing you literally can just go around like slicing people apart and like just destroying people with the is knife. it indestructible um, on the second like when you've upgraded it's not indestructible but when you upgrade it it lasts a very very long time um it's for for what it's worth in my opinion it's the best knife in the game um there is supposedly another knife that's like indestructible but it's like uh, weaker, um, so I may have to try that one out. Uh, but but I I love the knife that he gives you. Um, Dude, speaking of the 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 you know your second playthrough, uh, it was so so funny the the first time you hit up the shop uh, on you know on, on on the new game plus mode. There's just some, there's just this glaring item that like I just couldn't. I was like, how long is it going to take me to get this? And it's the grenade launcher with infinite ammo. Or the or is it the RPG with infinite ammo? It's like cost two, yeah, million. two million. I was like, holy shit! Like, <laughs> like I like, bought can, that way I, early in the game without realize without knowing that it's a one time use item. I <laughs> like yeah, I, I did like, too. Yeah, I was like, fuck yeah! I've got to rock an RPG this early, and then I used it and it was gone. And I thought I like accidentally sold it or something, and then it turned out that no, it's just a one time use. And I was like, oh yeah. And then yeah, like you said though, later on you can get the infinite. Uh, infinite one yeah um so we're getting towards the end of the game here um after you beat uh krauser uh you also go through like this like you things start to ramp up here you you start to go to this um to this like kind of prison island section mm -hmm. um and uh this is where this was just a really again another visually awesome thing um gameplay wise it was it's a l area that kind of allows you to be a little stealthy it's got some metal gear solid vibes like like the shadow moses like it's got to me it's got like this like shadow Modus, moses vibes um but yeah. uh that's a really really yeah, the, fun section yeah i mean mm. i th i think it's i think it's cool like uh, I, I i chose not to play like pretty much any of this game stealthy um you know, yeah, there, know, there is, you know, there, there are obvious things like, you know, like lights, spotlights to avoid until you can go like dismantle them. Uh, but, but, but it's not, it's not too, I wouldn't say it's too stealth heavy. It's just, you know, a few minutes of kind of dodging things and taking stuff down. Um, and yeah, and, and I was totally fine, man. Like I was, I was loving the action so much that I was like, I don't want to really even avoid any fight that might be coming my way. Um, so I don't, I don't even know like what happens if, uh, if, so if you get hit by the spotlight, do, do like enemies just come swarming at you? Yeah, I think it sets off the alarm, and then there's just more enemies coming after you. Um, nice. Yeah, you can you can kind of take it down piece by piece. And I think I don't know if we've already, I don't know at what point we fought Salazar. Um, is he towards the end? It's <sighs> a good question. Uh, I don't I don't know if we actually got to that, but yeah, at some point you do fight Salazar, which was. He's a very cool looking boss. Mm -hmm. Um pretty pretty tough boss too. 
uh, for the most part. As long, I mean, if you, I don't know, he kind of drops some ammo and stuff, but um, but he's a pretty challenging boss. Very cool looking, though. Very very cool looking. Yeah, well, I, think I, looked, I, I beat actually, him on my first try. Like it was for me, it was just it felt like a very time consuming boss, which I feel like a lot of the bosses were. That's what they were were time consuming. Whereas like mm -hmm. if you take your time and you don't try to rush it and you just wait, like wait, you know, keep an eye out for the R three evade button to pop up and make sure you get hitting that every time. I, I feel like th that's that's what all of these boss fights kind of have in common. They're just they're time consuming and you just have to be kind of slow and methodical uh, and understand that it might take a minute to take them down. Yeah. Um, but then you're, so you're going through that prison section. Uh, I don't know what to call it, but yeah, it's like some kind of prison yard thing. Um, you do go through the thing that you mentioned earlier where they start introducing the regenerators. Uh, and that's where the game kind of takes another little spooky survival tone to it. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a little bit more on the scary survival kind of side. Um, and you you talked about this earlier, but that's where you pick up the scope um, that gives you like the biothermal sensor, or whatever it's called. Right. Um, and uh, that thing becomes very useful. Um, one of my favorite parts towards the end here, though, uh, was when you're getting, you know, I think we get, we're getting close to the last few parts, but dude, when the helicopter shows up, your <laughs> rescue helicopter was delayed by like inclement weather. Um, but then dude, that whole section of running through the prison yard, I meant to tell you this specifically, so I don't know if you have the footage for it. I, I don't, um, I'm actually scanning right now and seeing if I can find it. Um, but yeah, as you're running through like the prison, I don't know what else to call it. This like high security Let's call area. It the prison yard. That's works. The high security prison or whatever. Cause it kind of just has that vibe. Um, but there's a where where the helicopter shows up and you're and this I think was this was in the original game as well. Um, but it but presentation wise, it looks so much better in the remake. Um, and you're kind of having to work like make your way through this this uh, high security prison area, um, still trying to get to Ashley, and you've got like the hell the chopper on your side now, like, like shooting, mowing down like hordes of enemies and stuff. And again, the HDR, the lighting, all this stuff just looks incredible. Yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy. Cause it, it gives you a strange break where, you know, you, you run in and, and the helicopter comes up. It's like, and these radios like, don't, don't worry. I'll take care of these guys. And it's just like, dun, 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 dun. it just, just feels like <laughs> yeah. you're in the middle of like this, this big budget action movie. Um, yeah. Where it's like, this is just kind of like shit you don't see in, in like, never mind video games, but especially VR games where you're like, yeah. you don't, you don't get these big over the top crazy moments like that where you're just like I'm, i guess i'll just i guess i'll just watch like <laughs> you know in first person not a cutscene. it's just uh it's very cool is this hopefully this was exactly what i'm looking for let's see if this is the footage um that whole kind of towards the end of the game sequence though was just so much fun um just from again just from the level design the pacing um fighting all these enemies and you've got a pretty good arsenal now um i really really do love a lot of the enemy design in this like i'm with you and that oh yes that's it this that's got to be it yeah because yep, yeah. uh, it takes it takes a second for for the for the chopper to kick in but yeah dude yeah. this whole section was just like oh my god it was just <laughs> like and village did something similar too where it kind of gets a little bit more and i don't know resident evil games like to do this now where Kind of towards the end of the game, it gets very actiony, action heavy. But yeah. I think that's I think that's a cool way to kind of like end the game on a high note, like where like towards the end it just starts getting really fast paced. But yeah, this whole sequence was super badass. Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, I mean, Resident Evil's always done this, right? There's always been it's always been high energy, high action toward the end. I mean, obviously, you know, with the, as the years have gone by, like they keep upping the ante more and more. But then there's always like the you know the countdown at the end too, which obviously we'll get to in a second. Uh, this does not stray far from the formula. Um, yeah, Brad Buster says it's more of a military base, not a prison. Thank you. Because I kept saying prison and yes. it was driving me nuts because I couldn't think of a better word. Yeah, <laughs> it's definitely a military compound. 
Oh, uh, lordy. Yep. Good call. Good call. Mil- military base makes a lot more um, sense. It feels. Well, it did feel like a prison though, mostly because we were fucking trapped on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, this whole section was cool, and then. Uh, and then that brings us <laughs> Hold to... Hold on, time out. Uh, Robbie, y, Robbie Y in the chat says, wait up, you can rotate the weapons in your suitcase that are vertical? He said he finished the game and didn't even know that. Dude, <laughs> that's a, it's yet another thing we didn't talk about. Um, uh, it, it, you know, Obviously, there's so many things to talk about in this, uh, in this game, but it, 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 I'm such a hoarder in these games. I, I keep everything. I don't want to get rid of... Like, I didn't sell for any first aid sprays until like the last hour of the game when i finally was like i've got enough right i was just stockpiling them <laughs> but that was keeping me from holding you know from from crafting more ammo that was keeping me from holding on to more weapons uh and so uh it, it and, and i had i don't know what it was man i don't know if it's like the tetris fan inside of me or or, or what it is i but, mean it does look very nice and organized i'll but, give you that but i didn't but you have, <laughs> you have way too you're at the fucking end of the game and you have like 10 health sprays yeah that's what i'm saying what is what is wrong right? with you? I've, got, I've got vials of all these green and green and red herbs and like i mean i am just like I, i'm stocked that to the gills with health Way yep. too many health well, this, sprays. Welcome to how I play video games. <laughs> that is <laughs> right? awful. Stockpile everything, <laughs> and so, uh, but 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 no. So which meant that every single time I picked up an item near the end of the game, I, I constantly had to open uh, the briefcase and and rearrange things and craft things and find room. And why why do I love that? That sounds like an uh, something that's really irritating. That sounds like something that should be just obnoxious and be like, oh man, this limited inventory. And on top of that, I have to find a way to f- fit all this in. I loved it. I, I absolutely loved that. And, 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 you know, and then, and then even like when you get to the shop and like deciding on what, what is it time to part with? I can't take all of these weapons with me. I can't take all this health with me. I can't take all this. What is it time to part with? And like, it's making those decisions that were, that was part of the fun. Yeah. I did play the Tetris thing and what is it what is that case called attache um, case attache um yeah that i did uh use like the manual organization but there never were times like once never even once did i use the manual organization oh uh, i enjoyed it too much you mean never once did you use the automatic yeah yeah, yeah. oh wait no, did I, I say I, manual I, yeah yeah so, yeah no i i, nipples, I enjoyed AJ, it nipples. as well <laughs> I enjoyed it as well, but there's like there'd be like one time where I was in a fight and like I'd be trying to pick up like one thing and like I'd have to like reorganize everything and this is like in the middle of battle and I was like no 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 fuck it like I and they, I didn't do it a lot but there was like once or twice uh, where I was like no I don't have time to sit here and do this like I'm in the middle of an intense battle and I want to keep going um, and so I love that there is that feature just to like automatically um, do that but yeah it's it's definitely. Uh, it's definitely more fun to kind of organize it because you get the layout. Also, uh, some of the rewards you get, um, you get more of these cases. And actually, like the the new designs that you can unlock and stuff are, are pretty nice. Um, and not only like do they look cooler, um, but there's actually like the way they're designed. There's like sometimes patterns, so you can kind of see like what sp- spaces are empty a little bit better. Uh. Um, yeah, like, so it looks good and it's actually like, has like a practical use to it, which is nice. I just, I just um, cared about upgrading them to have more space. Anytime a new attache case came up, like the, with more, more slots in it, that was my priority. I was like, this is the next thing I'm buying. This is the thing I need most in, in you know, during this run through. Um, what I didn't care about, and I don't know if you, you went through this, you could get like a red case and a black case and it would up the, yep. uh, up the frequency drops of, uh, of resources. Is yeah, some of them have some of them red, have uh, bonuses of that. Some of them have bigger space. Um, that is like something you know. This is more of a review than a or a spoiler discussion than like a tips guide. But that is definitely a worthy tip. Is like always prioritize upgrading your inventory space. Like always. Yeah, and um, and I think during the you know during this playthrough, like I, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to say, well, you know, may, maybe ammo is gonna be uh, more scarce. And like, maybe I should be getting the case that, you know, uh, ups the frequency of the, uh, resource drops because, because yeah. obviously health was not an issue for me, <laughs> obviously during this playthrough, I had so much of it. And so maybe the next time around, um, you know, resources, I will are say that, important. that red case looks really nice. Nice. If yes. you, if you, if you check it out, you'll see what I mean. It's, it, it looks really, really nice. Um, 
So this brings us to, I think we got like two more sections of the game. Uh, we finally face off with, I always want to say William Sadler, but I think his name is Osmond Sadler. <laughs> I think William Sadler was the was the guy that played death in Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. Um, <laughs> All right, so uh, wait, what, what am I bringing up here? Is this the boss fight? Yeah, the final boss fight, um, which isn't the end end of the game, but right. it's the final boss fight of the game. Um, and yeah, this was, again, another really cool looking fight. Um, but you can, at least on normal difficulty, you can kind of just get around it, just just shooting him, yeah. just laying into him. I felt like there was a strategy that I never quite figured out because so, so typical Resident Evil boss, he's got like these exposed eyeballs in different eyeballs, places, yeah. right? And I was like, okay, you shoot, shoot out one of the eyeballs. He drops to one, uh, drops to one leg or a couple, you know, and so he keeps him from moving. You get to run up and maybe melee him or something. Um, but I didn't really get a chance to do that very often. And so I would just keep shooting out the eyeballs and eventually he died. And I was like, wow, that was, uh, you know, obviously he's, he's huge. So it feels like an epic boss fight, but with no strategy involved, I was like, uh, this is, uh, you know, this is just, yeah. like, just, just like all the other ones, uh, or, or how I felt about the other ones. It was, it, it was more of a game of patience and, and, and making sure that my health was constantly refilled and making sure that I was shooting the eyeballs whenever I had a chance, but there wasn't a lot of strategy. Uh, I don't, I don't know if that was the case. If, uh, you know, if, if you need to implement some kind of strategy on a harder difficulty. Yeah. Uh, I think in the original game, um, there was like bazookas laying around everywhere and you'd have to like get, use the bazookas to like weaken him and then, uh, and then take him out. But I do like, again, I like, I do like the mechanic of, weakening them, stunning them, and then getting up and stabbing them. Um, it's always so satisfying to stab shit in this game. <laughs> like, yeah. so sad. Especially a big, giant eyeball that's, like, juicy, and you <laughs> stab it. <laughs> it's so, uh, it's it's really, really awesome. Very visceral feeling to it uh, with the gameplay. Um, yeah. I'm using the Stingray during this section here that I'm showing on screen, uh, but uh, but I, I think I ditch it. Oh, yeah. I ditch it pretty quickly because, it, because there's just handgun ammo lying around everywhere and so mm. you know again i th I think this will probably put me through my paces on a harder difficulty uh but i won't know that for at least a few more days if not a few more weeks yeah so you beat him um we we did forget to mention part of the story um the the part that Lu luis is good brian is that you if you actually read some of the stuff you find out that he's actually one of the scientists there yeah. that was doing research and he discovers a cure and you actually end up using that to listen, to, I think at least temporarily cure yourself and Ashley. We need, so we need to talk about, we need to talk about this real fast. Okay. Because at some <laughs> point, like Ashley, day. Ashley, <laughs> Ashley's like, Ashley is done, right? Like you're carrying her. I guess you always end up carrying some girl at the end of any Resident Evil game at this point. And so, and you, so you, you've, you've got her in your arms and you carry her and you bring her to uh, the, the, the OR, right? The operating room. You, mm. you throw her down in this chair, okay? And, and I need to play the footage for you guys, what happens after you throw her down in the chair. Here it is. There she's in the chair, right? Right? And it's, it's, this, it's this procedure right? with lasers and shit. Right, and so so Leon get, brings up this fucking computer terminal from like 1985, which is monochrome, and has and it's like I mean we're not even I talking like 286 <laughs> processing power. We're talking like this thing's barely running, okay? And so he's watch watch as he hits. He's not even looking at the screen. He just he he hits the enter key behind him. Right here's this <laughs> these lasers are about to come down. You think you'd be paying attention to the the computer screen, and and he just goes. It just like hits the keyboard. Yeah, go ahead. Like this, the, the most careless fucking uh, enter. I've I've, had any, I've never seen anyone hit the enter key so carelessly. And and, and it's to instigate <laughs> surgery to save this girl's life. And he's just like, yeah, do it. <laughs> and it's the goofiest he's thing ever. Like, yeah. So uh, so so not so not only is this surgery happening with she's fully clothed. Right. There's no Lewis. Lewis shows the incision on his chest. Right, he shows the incision on his chest, saying there's a surgery earlier in the game, and so you're like, oh, it's like this super invasive surgery. Her clothes are fine, 
She never has to take her top off. Not not that I'm advocating that we like you know see Ashley naked, but like but like this, so now <laughs> she has a are. massive scar underneath <laughs> the sweater, really. <laughs> And then, and, and then, like you know, you pass out, and then, and it turns out while you were passed out, Ashley put you in the chair, and you are also fully clothed with all this armor and gear on, right? This bulletproof <laughs> vest and shit. Uh, and apparently, you've got a scar underneath all of it. The whole thing just feels a little silly, AJ. Am I am I getting Brian, too in the weeds on this? You are way too in the weeds. I mean, it's a funny observation, <laughs> but. It's a video game, Brian, where you're where you're fighting m- monsters and creatures with centipedes pop er, popping out of their heads and, and I don't, stuff. So I don't I trust don't, I think, that these surgeries went properly. I, I need to see the scars. I don't. I don't see. I don't see how you let ninety percent of this stuff slide. Then you're like, but the surgery isn't realistic. <laughs> 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 I I think you lost. I think that boat sailed a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> when uh you know by i don't know by within the first 30 minutes of the game um but Amazing. thank you for pointing that out and <laughs> finding something else to critique <laughs> hey listen listen it, 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 you know here's it, it's 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 an important part of the game you know the entire time uh you're you're it, you're, you're suffering like right like leon loses control sometimes because because of this infection that's happening and he's, and he's allowing uh, it, it allows him to like lose control and have, and have the, the villain like take control of him. And like, you know, you can hear him talk and, you know, and Ashley of course, like loses her shit at some point, right? This, this, this infection is taking over. This is a huge moment. It says, this is going to rid us, both of us, not, not only yourself, but the, but the, your, your female companion that you're escorting, that you're trying to save. It's the mission, the entire game. It's time here we are in this piece of shit little operating room. It's finally happening. So hit the fucking enter button and make it happen. No scars. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay, moving on. I, 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 yeah, I got nothing for you there in terms of scars. <laughs> <laughs> you got me there. I can't explain the lack of scars, Brian. Right. One what, um, what, what out of ten. No scars. Cool though, it it would have been cool, though, to be able to actually, like, you know, do some VR AF st- stuff here and actually control the lasers and, like, aim it and you know, make a the, one of those little mini games, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, do, do, do you remember, cool, do you remember but... spoilers for dead Island, uh, dead Island, dead, uh, uh, dead space Two? Remember, you remember, remember in dead space Two, uh, where they had that massive needle and it was going into your eye, like fucking eyeball. Yeah. That, that was an impactful moment. They could have made this as impactful as that, but they didn't. Dude, it's resident evil. It's way more over the top and campy. And oh, like, I know. like I know. um, and, and it's also a lot more charming and, uh, yeah, it's it's fine. It's fine. It it it's it's supposed to be fun, Brian. It's this thing called fun. Uh huh. And uh, maybe you should maybe you should look that up sometime and see see you might like it. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'd rather play like Mortal it. Legacy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I I love making fun of Resident Evil. Uh, Re- yeah, Re- I don't I don't even bother because like it's so looking at the entire series like. I mean, like I said, I remember we had this conversation. You're like, yeah, at this point, Resident Evil really started to get wild. And I was like, <laughs> dude, <laughs> like, what? at this point, right. really, it took that long for you to be like, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> right. Right. No, it, it wasn't. It wasn't uh, when you were fighting the giant snake in Resident <laughs> Evil 1. Yeah. Right. Oh, man. Too funny. But, mm-hmm. uh, but so this brings us to the last section of the game brian um two hours later yeah uh, dude yeah it's a uh, 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 typical resident evil uh, 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 everything's gonna blow up everything's gonna blow up and you gotta get the fuck out of there in two <laughs> minutes which is you know fine um so let me hear your thoughts on the final epic jet ski escape yeah and dude and and i was so excited right because because first of all like uh, this, this is going to play over and over and over again but while you're running to the jet ski there are just like people laying around everywhere right and they're all like suffering and like you know their leader is dead and no, there's no power on, over them anymore and do you know that you can stop and kill every single one of them and pick up money and like ammo and all the other oh, shit yeah no i, I should have done that no you shouldn't have you know why because that takes up a lot of time aj and you need to fucking run <laughs> well, out i was of gonna say oh right because the timer's still going by the right. time you get on the jet ski i was like if you make it to the jet ski then you're 
Yeah, but okay. Yeah, no. Um, and so are you really good at this jet ski, man? Sirens on my end. Uh, this is well. This is take two. <laughs> I, I I learned a lot on take one, but not enough yeah. because listen, I was so excited when we get to the jet ski, and I was like, I am going to do this, right? Did you do all the tricks and shit on the jet ski too? Yeah, like not on like I didn't try to. I just happened to hit the ramps and did it some. Yeah. Oh yeah. So that so he as somebody who absolutely fucking loved the the, the speedboat. I was like, this yeah. is going to be amazing. This is going to this is going to be awesome. What a grand finale! The controls in this section are garbage. It's terrible. You're really good at it here, though. It's it's very inconsistent. Um, but yeah, I was I was actually the first. It's weird, man, because I've replayed another pl- place where I have a save spot, um, like a, a bunch of save or a save file here, and I've replayed this over and over, and I can't get like a consistent. Like, I, I don't have a consistent experience with this, but the first time I tried this, I was like, this feels awful. Yeah. Like, this feels so terrible. Um, like, I have very little control. It's unresponsive to what I'm doing. It's almost like forcing me on rails. Um, and then I played it again because I was like, dude, I got to know. Like, was I just, like, screwing something up or was my tracking off or something? And I did it again, and I, I was like, I like really got into it. Like I like hunched over and was like, like turning my whole body and like, it actually controlled like a lot better that time. Um, but then I did it again and it was back to being garbage again. So I, I don't understand, but it was to me, it was a little frustrating and disappointing for it to end on this. But when, when it does work and res- and is responsive, it's awesome. Yeah, um, absolutely. But it just doesn't seem like it consistently works properly. Yeah, agreed. There's some, there's something just not quite right about it, and uh, and and basically, um, yeah. I mean, so you, you know, so obviously, in, instead of in, instead of the way the boat controls, you grab onto the handles, and like, dude, I tried everything. I tried everything, right? Because I, so I was like, I, I'm assuming I'm just supposed to be doing this, right? And I I think there may be like a leaning mechanic or something. Maybe it's not explained well. Because when I really got into it, like it was, it seemed like it worked better. But if you sit there and just try to just turn like you would a normal handle or whatever, yep. like it, it doesn't work for shit. So, I mean, as you can see, like this, so this is my second run and I made it work. Right. And so it just, it just, yeah, didn't... you're making it look like it's flawless. Right. right. Now. <laughs> and, and I just, but honestly, like I, my first run was I crashed into every fucking thing that I came across <laughs> yeah. and I didn't Me even too. make it to the end. Uh, and so it was, you know, definitely nice to have another shot here. And, um, and you know, yeah, again, it looks like it's perfect, but at the same time, like I am struggling to, to really stay out of the way of these obstacles and, you know, and, uh, but it was cool. Yeah, like I'm, I'm looking at you turning the handle and it's not even like turning the jet ski. Right. Right. So like, so something's definitely up with this, uh, you know, again, um, Maybe you know. Maybe there's some. Maybe there's some element to the controls that uh, that like maybe we didn't figure out. I, don't, I, don't, I can't wait to you know give it another shot and and yeah. really spend some time on it. Just play it and replay it and see what you're supposed to be doing because it seems like it's almost there, but not yeah. quite. And it's such a fun, exciting sequence. Like you want it to be really smooth and easy and and uh, or not easy, but at least really smooth and responsive. Just responsive is all I ask. Um, but it feels like sometimes it was forcing me like on rails and stuff or, but yeah, I don't, I don't understand. I, I, I need to replay this part over and over and over and, and figure out what the secret is. It would be really cool. Like when I, when I like got into it and was like leaning and stuff, I was like, Oh, that's all it wants you to do. That's great. Like that's actually really, really cool because it's more immersive to like get into it. Yeah. Um, but I, but I just haven't been able to figure it out just yet. So I'm, I'm hoping that's the case here is that it's not just kind of like really rough control wise that it's like, no, there's like a, there's a method to it. Maybe you got to lean turn something like that. Um, that would be fine. I'd be totally okay with that. But if it's just ultra rough and unresponsive, then that's not good. Yeah. It was Jordan in the chat saying he had, he had no issues with it. Um, and, uh, so it's, it's, so, you know, so something's definitely up here. Uh, I will say, you know, I will say, uh, how crazy is it that there's like a whole trick system implemented in this, in, in this last <laughs> little two minute escape? Like, 
How How deep of a trick system are we talking here? I mean, I I would, I mean, I I did two types of things. I could spin, I could spin left or right going off of a ramp, or I could flip it uh, vertically. uh, So that I would do something to. Oh yeah. Like as you're going, as you're going off, like you, you know, you, 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 you turn the handles or you pull the handles back and then you do these like amazing flips and you get, and then you get points for it or you get, uh, Mm. you get money for it. And uh, I was like, well, that's cool. It's like, well, that's very cool. It's, you know, for, for this already high in, you know high intensity uh, escape scene for the end it's like they absolutely did not need to do that just going off the jumps was cool enough but then to add this on top of it just seems like you know it's really the icing on the cake it's such a cool way to end yeah i'll be interested to see you play through this part more um because uh yeah you your second playthrough of this part looks like my second playthrough where i was like oh that was like perfect um but then i did not I was not able to do that again, but, but all in all, um, yeah, man, you, you escape here and then it triggers a cut scene. And then that is resident evil Four, <laughs> which was, uh, honestly, a, a absolutely fantastic game, man. Um, yes, I, I really, really enjoyed these even despite, uh, you know, having a couple small flaws here and there, um, having some, less immersive uh designs in certain places um it's still <clears throat> as a game overall uh it is just an incredible experience in vr and uh <clears throat> it's uh it's it's got what i love about it the most is just the replay value the staying power that this game has i've never wanted to replay like a, a single player adventure so many times as I as I do this one, yeah, it certainly, um, certainly doesn't happen often, man. But I am one hundred percent there with you. Like you know, talking about it, going through it uh, right now, uh, you know, it's made me like again. I just finished it last night, and I didn't, I, I didn't go. Oh, thank God, that's finally done. You know, like seventeen and a half hours later, uh, most games that's how I feel. And then, but but when as soon as it was, as it was over, I didn't didn't miss a beat. You know, as soon as the credits were done rolling, which I skipped, um, but I mean, so many post credit sequences and shit, like, uh, yeah. like all these cutscenes and stuff, um, which by the way, by the way, pretty cool. Uh, what's, what, shit, what's your name? I just completely Ada forgot. Wong. Ada Wong. Um, pre- pretty cool, like little story arc at the end where, uh, where, you know, where Ada, uh, radios to, um, Wesker. yeah, Albert Wesker. And, uh, and, and it says, you know, what is this for? What is this file for? And he basically says he's going to like kill billions of people with it. And, and, she, <laughs> yeah. and she's like interesting. And then she hijacks the flight. And I was like, what a fucking cool way to end. Like she like throws the, didn't she like throw the, or does she keep the, she keeps the, it. I think Oh, she keeps it. Okay. Yeah. Cause I was waiting for her to throw it into the ocean. I was like, no dude, you got to fucking destroy that thing properly. You can't just let it wash up on a beach somewhere. And somebody go, I wonder what this is. Boom. <clears throat> billions dead. Shit. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so uh but yeah man like it, it it was cool like for 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 a game like you know with with characters and story that i didn't care all that much about um i did think it was a pretty cool ending yeah and it yeah and it was yeah i mean it was it was pretty cool and it was an interesting experience because not only was i experiencing it in vr but i was experiencing the remake in vr and just having both like it was it was just a lot to like take in and yeah, like this is, I definitely want to like go back and like, you know, f- go find some of the, see what some of the secrets are. Most of the time I did see some of the secrets and a lot of the times it's just like treasure or something, but, um, there are definitely like some secrets you can, once you obtain a key or, uh, you're, you've got Ashley with you where you can like boost each other up or whatnot. Um, you, it gives you access to these things you weren't able to access before. Um, and yeah, so most of the time it's like just typically like treasure or something else. But I'm I'm curious to I really want to when I replay this some more, like explore um first I want to play it on a harder difficulty, and then maybe maybe the next time after that kind of like explore every last inch of everything. Um I've actually got two save files. I've got a another standard second playthrough going, and then I've got a professional second playthrough going. Um the the second playthrough the standard is just for like exploring everything and then the professional is just for just the challenge um so pretty good stuff man amazing game yeah amazing game what a great way to end out the year 
Um, yeah. There's a big discussion. Uh, obviously, we talked about this a little bit on uh, on the you know award show wrap up, uh, but there's no you know the, the discussion followed uh, as to whether you know this game or or Village was the better game of the two, and that maybe mm. recency bias you know played a part in you know Resident Evil Four winning Game of the Year. Uh, as we showed in the uh, as we showed in the uh, you know in the wrap up special, we showed we showed the numbers uh, for the voting. Uh, you know, RE4 was clearly first place. Uh, and Gran then Turismo. Gran Turismo clearly second in Village. So there's a lot of love for all of the Resident Evil stuff. And, uh, yeah. you know, and I, hon I honestly think, like, I think, I, I kind of think Village is the better game, to be honest. But because of the lack of trophies uh, and, you know, like the, the fact that this has like some better upgrades, it just, this one having that much more replayability and in the opportunity to get a platinum for it, that's like the edge that just kind of bumps it up a little bit for me. It says, "Yep, this is a game I'm going to be playing for a while." Yeah, it it does it does. Um, but I'd say Village is the better VR game. You know what I mean? Like it's it's the better VR game, VR experience. Um, but I think that Four is the better overall game. Interesting. Yeah, I, I I think Village is the better overall game, but I think uh, like mm. just just from a like from a structural standpoint, uh, I think Village is the better game, but but the game that I want to replay, uh, and, and is is definitely four, and so it's they're neck and neck for me as far as I'm concerned. They're both ten out of ten games. Uh, they it's, so it's like debating on like which one of your kids do you love more, and the answer is I don't fucking love either of you. Get out of my house. I mean, no. The the answer is you got to play both of these games because these are two of the greatest VR games ever made. Yep. <clears throat> they're both they're both amazing. They're most both must plays. Um, hell, you can throw in seven as well. Seven is also in uh, one of the best VR games ever made. Dude. Like these are. These if, are incredible. If seven comes to PSVR two, with like the graphical upgrades and the VREF elements to get to give me two hands in the game, the whole thing, I think I I, I, I uh, fuck man, I think seven seven is seven's my favorite of the three as far as games go. Uh, but if they add, oh man, don't okay. I stop thinking. I'm about not this. gonna lie. Yeah, seven is what made me become. Well, I guess seven in VR. Like v VR is actually what made me really start loving Resident Evil because I've always liked it. But VR is like what made me love Res the Resident Evil series and become like a super fan of it. Um, and I think that's for many people. And that's why these VR modes are really cool. And, and I hope to see this happen to other games. You know, there's lots of genres, lots of games and things. And this is a perfect example. I know I'm not the only one that like, you know, um, maybe, you know, didn't play, didn't like, you know, wasn't a super fan of Resident Evil series before VR. But then it's like, you play it in VR and now you're like in love with it. Like, you know, I know yeah. I'm not the only one and yeah, good God, the resident evil seven is just so goddamn scary. Exactly. Um, <laughs> exactly. It's uh, so scary. Guys, real quick here before we take off, we got Planet Slurping with a five dollar tip. It says uh, if you game cats get a Quest Three for anything, make sure it's for Asgard's Wrath Two. I love my, both my PSVR Two, but Asgard's Wrath Two is on another level. He follows it up with another two dollar tip and says, "Sorry about the poor grammar. I took nitrous." <laughs> oh God! Nice. Uh, is it on? Is it on, is Asgard's Wrath on the Quest Two? Because I have a Quest yeah. Two. I'm not. I'm not buying a Quest Three. It is, and it actually didn't even. It, it, when it launched, I believe it didn't have any Quest Three upgrades, but it now does have Quest Three upgrades. I no longer have a Quest Two, um, but but my plan for the new year is to get a Quest Three uh, because, come on, guys, VR is great. Gotta love all mm -hmm. VR, and there's definitely there are great reasons to own a Quest Three. Um, I was looking, dude. I was looking at Quest. I was looking at PSVR Two and Quest. Uh, being like, uh, you know, how it was during like the PlayStation 4 era. Like, if you have a PlayStation 4 and a Nintendo Switch, you have the best of both worlds. You have, you pre you have pretty much everything right. that you could ask for. And so I'm, I'm feeling the exact same thing about VR right now. If you have a PlayStation 5 and PSVR 2 and you have a Quest 3, like, I feel like you're going to be set for a fucking while when it comes to VR. And like, that that is yeah. that is what I'm looking for. Yeah. I'm going to, I don't know. I... <laughs> I, don't know, I have a quest too, and it, it just collects dust and I like the thing, but I don't use it at all. And I don't, I don't know what it is. Uh, I just love my PSVR too. Um, I don't know if it's like the, the graphical boost maybe, uh, that I, that I kind of like, but 
I mean, it's a little um, bit of everything, obviously. I think PSVR 2 is more comfortable. I think the, you know, I, I having to charge the Quest all the time means that. Yeah, the battery know, life. Oh, that kills me. You know, um, but the but the fact is, is you know, there's, there's going to be games like Asgard's Wrath that comes along all the time. Yes, that, that, that is like, right up my alley. Do not want to miss these games. Uh, and so, you know, it's like I, I don't expect the Quest 3 to kick PSVR 2's ass, right? As a, it, Again, just like the Switch, it's, it, it, you know, from performance standpoint it's going to be a little underwhelming but it's going to offer some fucking pretty awesome games that like, right. i would hate to yeah, miss they, out on. They, they certainly do well with innovating and and doing additional features and and things like that like having other uses for it um yep so that's a discussion for another day brian and to close things out matt vegan with the two dollar tip says uh record monday games cast monday sucks less now Thank you, everybody, for hanging out. We really appreciate you guys. Make sure uh, you go subscribe to AJ's channel. The link is in the description below. Also, come join us over on Discord. Free to join. Let's hang out. Let's shoot the shit. It's a good time. Uh, also, uh, dude, everybody supports us financially. Uh, dude, without parole, we live and die with you guys. I, I don't I don't, I don't, don't have any sponsorships yet. Maybe I should fucking take up a sponsorship for the new year. You know, how, how do you feel about G Fuel, AJ? I think I should get no. a G No. I you think th you should do me me undies. <laughs> no, no, don't do that. I feel like if I did um, me undies, I'd actually have to show you guys with me wearing <laughs> my my me undies, and I, and I don't think anybody wants that. I know I don't want that. No, uh, you, we can we can find we can find a good one. Find I something. Need a VPN. Get a VPN. I need a good VPN. Oh, so like Nord VPN. That's right. Like everybody advertises Ooh. that shit. Is I don't Nord know about not a good one? one. I don't know, dude. Like I don't use VPN. <laughs> um, I don't know if that's good either. But I haven't done my research on VPNs. I, I haven't had one in a while I need but until i get a sponsor i rely on you guys 100 percent. thank you so much for being amazing uh so if you support us over on uh, patreon.com slash without pro games if you uh if you're a member over here if you tip during the shows guys you're keeping the lights on i appreciate you so much thank you to everybody who does that uh and, and and of course thank you to everybody who just hangs out during the show we've always said this community is always more important than money we, we want you to be here and we don't want you to feel bad if you don't support financially that's not that's not the, that's not it's not what matters most, I promise you. Um, but thank you all for being here. And thank you, of course, to everybody who sits back and watches the show and doesn't say a goddamn word. Because I know you're out there. I used to be one of you. Can you imagine me not saying a goddamn word? It seems inconceivable. But you're out there, and we love you just as much. Happy Monday, AJ. Muerte, muerte, muerte. Cue the motherfucking cat, right? Because I want to say see you guys on West Day. Happy New Year. First... Games cast of 2024 is in the books, Brian, and I feel like it was an okay one. It's all right. Um, <laughs> it was long. <laughs> My New Year's resolution is to cut this shit down by about two hours. It was definitely a long one. Luckily, you caught me in a good mood, and I do need to go get some gas in my car, though, as soon as this is over. Jason Voorhees in the house tonight. <laughs> Macho times three. The real estate procrastinating game cat. I almost thought that said prostate game cat. Uh, Bill, the bit jello boy, that jiggly gamer cat. Guy son, fist bump to you. Good night to you. Move Master Mick, mad underscore vegan. Thanks so much, Dan Kiefer. Uh, MJ Carpenters and sponsored commodities like corn, pork bellies, wheat, etc. Nice. <laughs> These are things like you just normally. Oh, oh! I know one. We need to. We need to be sponsored by Poncho's Dip. It's the best cheese dip ever made, and it's expanding. It's getting. It's, it's now available in my region, which is really nice. Poncho's Dip. If it's at your Walmart, go get it. GC13, the Diet Pepsi Cat says, "Open VPN, uh, AJ." Thank you so much. I need to make a note of that. I, I uh, lost my VPN service not too long ago, so I need to get a new one. Um, Awesome Tatum, my Crossfire Sierra squad mate in the house. He is my Raf Raphael. R what is that guy's name yeah. in Crossfire Sierra squad? Oh, uh, the, oh, head, uh, the head. Yeah. Uh, Raul. Raul, that's it's right. Gotta be, it's got to be Raul. Yep. Um, the head bite uh, says get a specific special uh, specialty coffee sponsor. Uh, oh, yeah. Dude, uh, let's see here. That'd be great. Me uh, masochista <laughs> so sony should unlock pc psvr2 with pc and let us play steam vr games i'm actually at the point where i'm like yeah they should do this i mean they want you to buy a ps5 uh but it, at this point why not like just the more people to buy a psvr2 why hold yourself back like that um 
let people use it the way they want. MJ Carpenter <laughs> uh, says, I'm still waiting for Dreams to come to PSVR 2. Me as well, my friend. Although uh, it is interesting what following Bad Robo and Goffrey Man making pod racing uh, in, in Dreams still for VR. Slap Nuts in the house tonight says, Brian, I'm with your brother. I brought an uh, Equestria over the holidays and as you know a psvr2 lover uh <laughs> Equestria. snafu it's a voice chat thing yeah jordan f adam all you people silver nexus my dude hey uh, uh all of you salvador sh- shout out to everybody who's asking for 20 questions <laughs> it's it's, it's oh, three yeah. it's a three and a half hour show uh we will definitely we'll get back to 20 questions uh on wednesday i promise yeah i need to do laundry and get some gas in my car <laughs> I, yeah, also my, us- my legs are going numb <laughs> <laughs> um but brian before we go yeah i must know yeah what happened oh god i forgot to do this yeah two years ago this day in psvr history because this is my favorite part of the show all right let's see uh let's find the closest to the first of the year um going all the way back to jesus guys this is difficult um mm-hmm. i imagine this was a pretty dark time for PSVR two two years or PSVR two years ago, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I guess two years ago would be uh, the uh, January third. That's the closest we Why got. Why were we hopeful and where eventually your dreams were crushed? Here it is, AJ. January third, twenty twenty two. Two years ago. Here it is. Now that it's finally scheduled for production, when will we see PSVR two? And then, uh, it, 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 and then it says a, a million other insane NGVR predictions. Remember when PSVR two was codenamed Next Gen VR NGVR? Yeah. Yep. I don't know why they didn't stick with that. I mean, that wasn't ever a public thing, but they should have stuck with that, man. Like, they really, like that's that would have been a cool thing. So, so two years ago, I still use it. I still use it sometimes. January third, twenty twenty two. We were like, so when will we see PSVR two? Obviously, they had already shown off the controllers at this point because it's in the thumbnail, but yet it was going to be another 13 With- months before the thing actually came out. Uh, this was a painful time. Yeah, it was it was painful, man. They they straight up should have launched it with alongside the... They, they kind of... Yeah, I don't want to get all into it. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I don't want to get into it. I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy with where we're at right now, and I just, yep. you know, I'm hopeful... Uh, I'm hoping for some good good news this year. Obviously, there's a big shuffle going around, um, but I'm hoping that it leads to some some big changes in a good way for us. Hell yeah, hell yeah! It's been dude. Last year was such a good year. I, I, I think this is going to be a fantastic year. So everybody, dude, 2023 is incredible. Hold on to your butts, everybody. It's going to be a good one. All right, you guys. Let's get out of here. Have a great night. Uh, thank you, AJ. Thank you, everybody. Uh, we love you so very much. Happy New Year.